Welcome everyone to another edition of the Open Series Monthly Finals. I am Ringe and this is Nerd Josh and we're here with Guilty Gear Strive. We've been fiending for this game since launch. I know me and Josh have been playing it non-stop. I know the players of the day have been playing it non-stop as well. Josh, how you been feeling about the game? Thing? Honestly, I've been feeling super excited. Just every week is just back-to-back -back action, regardless where you go in the world right now. And speaking of which, in Europe, it has been pretty popping, you know. They're feeling pretty hot after a, a pretty strong win yesterday. And, you know, I want to see that carry on to oh. how they're going to do this. You know, I know it's a hard loss, but it is but the narrative. We, you only can work oh. harder from here, you know. Sometimes, That's true. Sometimes you got to take them early so you, you, you get it going. But I'm proud of our European uh, family out there. And I hope to see what they've brought to the table because we are getting closer and closer to these big events this summer. That's a good point. You know, we have the Olympics going on and the flavor was definitely felt in that international 10 v 10 that happened on Leffen's channel yesterday. The US versus EU, just in case you guys aren't exactly familiar with what we're talking about here. Yeah, the EU managed to take it in, in a nail Clutch. biter, right? Leffen and I believe Space Boy clutching it out at the last second, right? Or Space just in general with the May. Um, we're not going to see either of those players, I think, today, but we are going to have some heavy hitters from the EU region rated Duke it out. Definitely some players that I'm very familiar with. I believe Heapski's in the brand bracket and all kinds so we're gonna actually take a look at the bracket right now to see who oh, exactly yeah. is in there it's gonna be retro mix up a double m goga acker also sorry yeah definitely very familiar names if you've been following the eu scene for guilty gear strive especially the playstation monthly tournaments definitely i mean just look at all these names i've seen them not only just the playstation tournaments but all these events all week so you know these are competitors that are ready new old regardless they are here to play and do their best yeah, most definitely. We've already seen how like advanced the EU scene is, right? As you mentioned, they were able to take the victory yesterday, and we're going to see what exactly they're going to be fighting for today, right? Let's take a look at the prize pool, and that first Ooh. place prize is going to be the 400 Smackaroos, of course, followed all the way through to that fourth place. So you got to get in that upper echelon of results if you want some cash today, but you know these players are going to be duking it out with the most intent possible in terms of playing their best, right? I can't wait to see them, as they always have been bringing it to the table. Like I said, like Heapski, a retro mix-up, Acro all these players are very familiar experience and a quite uh, like just well good at the game as well yeah i agree honestly like just even looking at I, i've seen them play personally but looking at their accomplishments as well you know there's a lot of pride in their own experience and where they're going so you know there's, there's a lot of people that are sure in their skill set and they're coming here to take that money yeah, and if you're trying to take some money in the future, you can sign up for these tournaments at compete.playstation.com. But if you're not looking to compete as well, there's plenty of information to be had there, analysis from talents and top players, and just in general information that you can find on the competitive video game scene in the PlayStation verse, if you will. So, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to get into the matches, of course, today, but there's all kinds of talented players, as we mentioned. We're going to see a plethora of characters as well. That's what's been kind of dope about Guilty Gear Strive. Despite, you know, the, the soul memes and stuff like that, a lot of the time we've seen plenty of characters do a lot of work right not in only did the eu versus us uh 10v10 happen yesterday but also the china and korea 10v10 happened yesterday right where china fell despite having four souls so you know it's not the <laughs> end all be all to the characters but i believe we do have our graphics ready for the first uh player Ooh. in our tournament today and it's going to be heapski the boy coming through with that kai kisuke as well that we've seen oh. actually get work done in that 10v10 you mentioned yesterday joss he put some w's up that soul couldn't so you know these kai players are definitely bringing a uh, game plan to the table that a lot of people are unfamiliar with or are not ready to deal with and it's funny because it's not like it's very shenanigan or mix-up based right it's just solid footsies and hit confirms a lot of the time yeah kai just needs that good call out if they can condition you into one counter hit forward heavy slash near the corner it is complete cash out but this character that oh, goga boy. has here yeah. repping from russia man chip this character gets hit hard. He does not want to get hit by that counter hit heavy, but he can control the neutral the whole match, and it's so overwhelming to catch up once he gets started. So it should be interesting, the approach of cat and mouse that this match will turn into. <laughs> Yeah, I always uh, picture like Chip as one of the car or one of the cars, like from Fast and the Furious with the NOS, right? And it's always how you manage the speed <laughs> of the character, right? It, it's true. when you actually hit the NOS, do you take it out of the turn? Do you take it into the turn and crash into a wall? In this case, the wall being like a two H from Kai or one of these counter hit anti airs, right? That could definitely net him big damage. But a lot of the time, the chips have been maneuvering him, handling, piloting him well. And when they are like that, as we saw like Leffen yesterday, I mean it's 
just it seems like he's one of the best characters in the game man. and sometimes it feels unwinnable hey i agree uh honestly it's gonna come down to the players choices and looking at these players surveys here you know goga he's gotten top threes top ones he's been there and Ipsky, well you know being a little uh I'd say a little modest, you know, they kind of had their profile a little left out there. We have seen the wins and their potential. Mm -hmm. So I think this is definitely going to be explosive. You're going to have somebody that, you know, a little of experience here and it's somebody that's looking to make experience. And th that always makes quite the match. Most definitely. And Heapski being modest, huh? Okay, Heapski. You don't want us to outplay you, bro. I'm just going to call you the best Kai and then watch you. <laughs> watch what happens when you, you know, don't actually execute that. It's okay. Hey, maybe. Maybe they're not trying to put tracks out there like, hey, don't watch my footage. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to exactly. for the PS Open monthly finals, all right? Well, now is the time to shine, if anything. We already see the 6P come out from Goga both times here, both his actually. So, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. And Heapski, a little bit of a desperation gold burst attempt there. I think he definitely wanted the gold burst, wanted that hunter tension, but not actually in range. Now, Goga's just running that chip game you alluded to at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, especially getting hit out of the gold burst attempt, tightened up right away, and Goga is just disrespecting this defense so much with the catch throws and strike throws. Yeah, my man is oh. going up. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Hewski not out of this round just yet. OTG with that nice meaty game. flip kick, my goodness. Plus range for days, including that heavy stun edge as well. Oh, it looked like he was trying to bait out a burst attempt from Goga. He stopped his pressure after that first hit, but my man was just swanging. Yeah, no fear out the corner was like, give me that round back. But the throw turn around, okay. Now Goga's gonna get a turn in the corner and gets that sweep. Oh, it's all adding up. Yeah, most definitely. It looks like Goga has been pretty antsy on defense. So it looks like he, that's why he's been kind of opened up by the stagger pressure. But now he's here with a very clutch back dash there. Gonna be able to get a full combo as well. Flip kick into the corner. Carry OTG, mini flip kick again. Yeah, this is really a tight plus frame pressure coming out from Heapski. Yeah, Heatsky, good position here. Ooh. Now getting cornered, it could get rough. But just needs one good hit, maybe a reversal or something. Yeah, a really good wake up back dash, but he's not out of the corner oh. just yet. Ooh, off the wall, no MJ. Oh, and that damage, always so solid. Now kind of equal footing here. Ooh. Trying to work off the RC. Yeah, and Chip's still so fast, even with the slowdown, able to get out of the air throw range. <laughs> oh, no! Oh. Oh, I got to imagine that was an execution error. I don't think he would want the attempt at the DP from the 2D. I mean, maybe that works, but I have to imagine it was execution error. <laughs> no, honestly, I agree with it. It could have been a fake out, you know, just to throw him off. But honestly, it was probably not a half circle. And, yeah. you know, the, the dragon punch read as a as a dragon punch. I mean, the half the quarter circle read as a pre-buffered dragon yeah. punch. So yeah, unfortunate there. Yeah. So, but, you know. Could have made it something going, just the impulse throw cashing out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, uh, I think Heapski just had kind of, uh, unfortunately, fell apart towards the end there. Got kind of overwhelmed by the chip pressure. We saw the execution error come out. But I don't think he should be too discouraged by that loss because I think overall he still played a solid game plan, especially obviously in that round where he dominated. So if he could kind of uh, tame the chip a little bit better, uh, yeah. just in general with like the anti that we talked about before. I like the stun dipper usage. I think staying to the ground more will work out better too. We saw the six Ps come out from Goga pretty consistently. So so. Just the information from the last two rounds, you know, Goga committed hard on, and with no help, so he might be able to use that late. Oh, yeah. nice counter. And he's he using that DP to actually, like, oh, actually yeah, like, expose some of the gaps, and Goga using it right back, right, and the counter hit 2D as well. More wall bounce combo's gonna break it here with the Alpha Blade. Yeah, Goga just seems comfortable on just riding the momentum wave and just like, yo, give me my turn, but wow. Blocking that uppercut and bringing it back. Heaps. Yeah, going with the plus frames in the corner once again. Keeping it locked down here. Not breaking the wall. Didn't go into anything here, but he will break the wall for the kill there. Good stuff from Heaps. Oof. The turret around. Getting that first round. Good. Very good. Indeed, indeed. And Goga took our first game, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get the score corrected in a moment. But right now we have the Kai. Heaps taking control once again. Trying to bounce back from that first game loss. What the DP on the jump to pay? Very nice. Let me even take him on the wall once again. Break it for the positive bonus. And it's going to be tough for Goga to just like 
get back in without taking a little bit of damage on Kai, but Gold Burst oh, actually that burst. Out. Yeah, actually getting, wow, RTL right off the bat. <laughs> Super, <laughs> what are you doing? Lucky yeah. there was no a clash there, though. They could have just went soaring in opposite directions. True, yeah, Heapski really trying to abuse the fact that he had 100% tension right there, but not able to actually cancel his super before he got supered by Chip. And now YRC at the very last second trying to hold on to this last bit of health he has. Oh, what a oh, clash! Oh. My Ready for it, and wow. Just living on a prayer here and bringing it back. I like it. Just one turnaround super. That's all that Goga needed. Yeah, you can see the Goga still looking for the 6P in the corner. Give it a first out for Heapski. Oh, oh my goodness, long distance again. The low. And spends the RC right away. Drop though. And the, wow, this is big. The back throw. Getting that turn back, man. Heapski doesn't want to be here. Literally had the last game to tie it up. Yeah, that could definitely be a game losing drop from Goga right there. But he actually just busts out with a DP once again. Alpha on the cross up. We're starting to chip games once more. You have wall break on the Alpha Blade. <sighs> Positive bonus. He's got no tension right now, though, so it's not going to be immediately available for an RC. It's building quick, though. That pressure is on. Doesn't swing out the clone, but the trade. Not a lot of health here for Heapski. Can only do so much of that in the BRC and the stand kick. Let Kai have no option to get escape and takes the damage right away. Yeah, you highlighted the uh, game deciding moment right there in there, Josh. The fact that the BRC AoE did hit. I think Heapski, since it hit so late towards the BRC, actually didn't think it was going to affect him for a moment. And he just ended up getting clipped trying to press buttons. So, yeah, good stuff from uh, Goga and the ship. Like, he definitely recognized the situation well. And that's so smart, too, because a lot of people like the backdash preemptive neutral. And with the run up, you know, you come up. Use a BRC to call out a backdash. That is a ton of damage if you're right. It didn't particularly call that out right away, I would guess, but it still got the hit. It got them trying to get out the scramble. And wow, really working out here. Yeah, and he just applying the stun dipper pressure afterwards. Yeah, staying in the air to avoid the stun is very smart. Gold burst coming out from Hevsky, though. That's so much access to meter. The RC pressure, but good blocks. Gets right out with the Alpha Blade. Trick. No. Able to keep him locked down again. That far H is so good at catching preemptive jumps. Able to just break in the wall. Yeah, no, the positive tension rate. This is going to be trouble because all this RC pressure. Oh, no, never mind. Finds a way with the throw. Yeah, he's he getting that throw a little bit too early on the jump in, hitting from Goga and not canceling into anything, exposing me getting broke on it. Oh, YRC opening that great coupon and man, that throw, okay. Blocking and then counter poking after the 6k as well. Oh my goodness, committing to the DP like that? That was guess for game here, very much in the corner, locked down, back dashing to avoid that anti after the whip jump, but Yoda, 9 oh, frame far oh, as all day, every day. Yeah, why not? It's so fast. Just throw it out there. Oh, wow, we're we checked. Now, Heapski fighting back, you know. It's, it's getting in trouble somehow here. The forest going out again this time. Yeah, Ooh, pre what there? preemptive jump K. That's one of the security blankets for chip players, man. Always going to it. It's such a good tool, especially because he has the triple jump. So many ways alters jump afterwards anyway. DP to relieve himself oh. of some of the pressure, but man, Heapski keeping him locked down. Yeah, nice use of the high jump kick there. Now playing this fireball spacing game, but Chip bouncing around everywhere, trying to get a dive kick in there. Wow, counter hit out of the block string. Oh, just a super, super attempt. My goodness, Heapski though, waiting for a reversal. Uh-oh, forward punch, burst out. Heapski with the run under though, that's smart. Yeah, and really good. That. Yeah, getting the close out. I mean, did not want to be under the pressure of Chip right there. I mean, would be easy to succumb to that pressure. Yeah, and in that situation, right, Chip has so many ways to make his way in, whether it be with the Alpha Blade, whether it be with the Dash of Far S. There's definitely multiple ways that he could close that distance. That's why Heapski put up the stop sign, right? Had the RC ready as well to combo off of it. Oh, called out and gets the burst as well. Wow. Nice yeah. reversal through the fireball, bro. And be able to DP. Oh, the otter. I love the otter combos. Man's actually a bandit made to learn how to become a ninja. You got to admire someone <laughs> following their dreams. 
Yeah, Mr. Otter, you know? Yeah, a little bit. that new day job, you know, post-COVID. Still working <laughs> just as hard. Mm -hmm. He got used to wearing a mask. He was like, I might as well become a ninja. Ooh. Yeah, why not? The 2D from long distance right there from Gogo. -Go. Well done. Ooh, the forward punch. I like it. But the jumping right away. <sighs> the flip kick out of rage. Man, we are just going haymakers back and forth. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Goga has been a pretty good at that gameplay style, right? Just kind of overwhelming his opponent. You can see right here is the chip game plan. He's really fishing with those six P's as well, trying to catch like these light buttons or like these mids that are going to be pressed back from Deep Ski, but hasn't been able to find it. Yeah, I mean, the range that he's fighting Deep Ski at, a lot of the time, Deep Ski does get a hit, doesn't get a favorable combo conversion off of it. So, you know, it's a lot of constant neutral pressure. Yeah, it was the 6P once again. This time it's the anti air. Gamma Blade with the plus frames. Oh, he wow. has the DPs out of the Alpha Blade. Oh, but Clipped. it doesn't matter. Yeah, Clip with the load directly into the wreck of Goga with another W okay. on the board. Well done, man. Yeah, he definitely played super well in that entire set, to be honest. Not very clean. And I mean, the ninja is just always there. You know, the Shoto, Kai, you know, has very good normals, can do so much, but. What could you do about a character that's just always on you when you even don't have resources? Yeah, and I think that was really the bane of Heapski's existence, right? Is the, a lot of the time when he got put on the defensive end, it was real early. And then when that happens, you don't get a chance to build meter, right? You didn't break the wall earlier in the set. You didn't have positive bonus or something like that. If you just get overwhelmed early, like Chip just applies that pressure and you have to like bet on a DP or something like that because you're not even going to build the meter to do something like a YRC or something that you consider a bit safer of a defensive option. True, true. I mean... They're both playing pretty great, though, going down very close in this match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think that was the set, to be honest with you. I believe it was 2-1 on the scoreboard, but I think that was 2-2 and was the last game. So I think Goga is advancing. I think that's why we're not getting another match at the moment, if my Makes calculations sense. were correct. But yeah, I mean... It's a, it's a tough matchup. I think a lot of people right now are still getting used to fighting Chip, right? That's one of the characters that is just, like, very easily tiltable. Like, you know what I mean? You, you tilt yeah. very easily against a character like that that is just completely overwhelming. Very fast, hard to catch. I mean, the jump 2K is a nonsensical move in and of itself. Um, but in addition to that, right, we talked about how fast his far slash is. Just one of the best buttons in the game. And just in general, the alpha blade, like the constant cross-ups, the long-range command grab. He just has so many things to annoy you. And I believe like a lot of them are like, uh, they they will lessen in the severity with the more we train against them, right, as mm. fighting games go. And I think they're, his uh, like stuff specifically, like the Alpha Blade cross-ups, like the command grabs, are very trainable. It's just kind of hard to do so, and you got to like consciously make the effort to do it. But uh, oh, when that happens, I think he'll uh, be a little bit more manageable. But right now, he seems, uh, and sometimes it makes you feel helpless. But let's take a look at how the bracket has progressed after that first match, shall we? Let's get into it. Ooh, yeah, so double M and Tech and Flame coming up. Okay. Yeah, Double M coming up next once again as well. So this is going to be a good match, I believe. But uh, oh, it looks like we're actually going to skip that match at the moment because oh, okay. uh, Double M is having Apologies. some technical difficulties. And I think we're going to Retro Mixup and Red Eye 783. And Retro Mixup okay. is a, a player I'm very familiar with, one of the premier yep. souls in the EU, I believe, representing uh, the UK as well. So Retro, I mean, he has been putting it down in these PlayStation Monthly tournaments, always in the upper echelon of results as well. Not too familiar with his opponent, Red Eyes, but, you know, I'm sure that he will be bringing some fine gameplay to the table as well, as always. Yeah, I like how you said that, because I've been seeing Retro all over, and even with their notes, they're saying that, you know, they're pretty new in the circuit and getting uh, uh, top two at the preseason ICFC, you know, that was one of their big accomplishments. So, they just hit the ground running here and getting right into it, which is amazing to me because, you know, as somebody that got in the games a similar way, you know, is a lot of fun to just constantly play tournaments and work on your growth. So it's cool. Yeah. And let's take a look at the player card for, I believe, Retro Mix of going to be the first one on the dock. And as you can see right there, my man got a preview of it right now. We got the real thing yeah. now. Of course, my man, Ethan, representing London, London, England, of course, with that soul that we all promise you. That you're going to be able to see the bad guy in the building once again. Tony Montana of Guilty Gear Strive We're looking to spray some enemies down as per usual. You can see he's pretty successful at doing so. 75% win rate in these PlayStation nice. tournaments. 
Ooh, and with a soul, with a win rate like that, you got to watch out the explosive gameplay coming for a character like Chip. But Red Eyes, we just saw what Chip can do in the last match. This character can deal with archetypes like Soul and Kai, but I will say Soul does more damage, you know, and does oh, yeah. have the stand kick, the three frame stand kick. So that might come into play a little more to get some openings here. But Chip has what it takes to put Soul on the line, you know, like. Will Soul overcommit or will Chip kind of, you know, put himself there to get hit, you know, will be the answer. My man Retro makes up stage James Chip at 69. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, let's go. Uh <laughs> nice we, we all jo we all joined him in the james shen fanaticism but yeah i'm really glad that you highlight the three frame 5k of course coming out from so i think both of these characters have ways to kind of deal with the other's nonsense like we mm -hmm. talked about the far slash from chip being faster than souls and longer range can definitely kind of contest with him on the ground in those certain ranges but as you mentioned the 5k oh. is a great answer to like alpha blade cross-ups and like him coming down from the air even though he lost right there Still quite good as you can yeah. see a trade he's still got the trade yeah. yeah no exactly like he he could take a couple of those to really cash out especially when he has meter yeah right now you can see oh the air superiority i'm telling you those chips always oh. looking for that preemptive jump k take I you like out the, the conversion air. that was really That's good super. just to make sure and get some good damage there yeah but oh that was an interesting setup afterwards it looked like some type of i don't know jump set up oh. to to kind of throw retro mix up off but he's not having any of that oh no conversion off that bandit bringer coming down from the top rope though both players holding on to their burst for now just to see if red eyes oh just actually saves it for the next round not going to try to hold on to that heart yeah that relentless pressure there and i really like how retro mix up had the two slash bds on deck for the alpha blade so let's see how that works out late game as well nice factor to set it up and these this frame advantage is a problem for chip he's trying to get out immediately yeah and this is a where red eyes wants to be now right oh, playing the jump 2k games my goodness the burst out from retro is completely whips as well oh, yeah. but a big volcanic viper you mentioned it highlighted rc take him to the corner this time but we just swing it with 2s on wake up Ooh. my goodness you ain't gonna throw bait me and then the nice six on the cross up. Yeah, tries to bait out a DP there with the back dash. Doesn't give it to him till later. My goodness, good stuff from Retro. Not being linear with his game plan whatsoever. And oh. Red Eyes with the green leaf throw coming through. Man, explosive. It's like, so I know you got that explosive damage. Well, I got those explosive throws. What are you going to do about that? Yeah, the hidden leaf, man. Definitely still tough to deal with. One of the things that we talked about, right? Trainable, but it's still so hard to look for right now in this stage oh. of the game. Didn't get the cross up, but the positioning's important here. Nice jump slash. Pressure's on. Nice swing there. Oh my god, yeah, I did extra damage too. He swung on the Gamma Blade. Ooh, actually gonna respect it this time though, and he gets crossed up. Nice instant block the last second there, but still not able to rule that air to air game. Not oh, actually able to convert, but he's not used to seeing that super oh. clearly because he did not punt. Yeah, I could have got way more. But you know, go with the safe option here again. Go with the DPRC. Quarter conversion. DPRC. Yeah, but he's going to burst, trying to keep his momentum going here. But no, again, bringing up the command throw to end the round. Red Eyes saving both times he does the command throw for round ending scenarios right there. Well done from him. Oh, faithful. I mean, both players kind of had like a gimmick in their pocket there to throw each other off. So. Let's see how this adds up. The slash VB really paying off all three times, though. But that command grab late game, the both times worked. Yeah, man. He just uh, caught him looking for other options, right? Especially in scenarios like that where you don't have a lot of health left. You're just more prone to down back, right? You don't want to swing into these scenarios where, like, you can't actually afford another scramble here. You can't afford the opponent just getting, like, even their least optimal combo because you're going to die. A lot of those situations, you're just kind of uh, holding down back and blocking more than usual. And then you open yourself up to command grabs, especially long range versions like that true but i was actually wrong he did bb one of the three i forgot so I maybe he has an edge with these volcanic vipers <laughs> old counter hit again the jump came in building that airspace but we know who rules the ground space that far as all day every day Ooh, and then you have catching him probably trying to hold up my goodness so he's melted 
soul really with the gains. He's like, you know, you might have that persistence and speed, but when I get going, it's it is my turn. Yeah, absolutely. And oh, Retro Mix, so wow, trying to risk it on the SDP afterwards, and then pressing a 5k, a lot of whiff recovery on that move. Mm, got caught reaching. Oh. Very nice, and good damage to the wall break, gonna get more meter out of this. Ooh, nice air to air, <laughs> like you said it, but with ready, out of range, I, I kind of like the chat. RC pressure, trying to jump out, but no, the clones. A little help from the friends here. Here's it this time. Oh, trying to come down with a falling button, which is out of range. You know, open a window of opportunity for Retro. PRC does catch him on the Beyblade. Well done. And what? the Gunflame going to stuff the Gamma Blade. He just turned on the Gunflame pressure right away, and all three have been working really well. Oh, wow. Right out of range. Out the throw. The trade. And, and then the air to air. Room, bro. Yeah, the jump K air to air, right? <laughs> so good for Chip, dude. Like, it, it is seriously one of his best moves. The matchup fails. Oh, oh, oh. Right, right back. Yeah, you have a fast one for you, Chip. Yeah. Four heavy slash in the throw. Oh, 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 oh. Just pressure on the dunk. Will he get the burst in time? No. 90 seconds remaining on the clock. Less than a 10 second round there. That's how it goes sometimes in Guilty Gear Strive, especially when the bad guy is on the screen. That was definitely a retro mix up there. That was DP <laughs> to pressure to throw into a high low. And you got to love it. I mean, that's why we're all here. You know, the mix ups, the, the ambitious plays, you know, fighting games, whether it's a jump in fierce to fierce to 100% combo you saw on Twitter. You know, it gives us feelings whether it's winning <laughs> or not, you know? Yeah, well, it was definitely right there. And I mean, he charged us, right? It's 28 frame overhead. You can't, can't blame the man for testing them. You got to blame the person for getting hit. It was a long overhead. But of course, with the plethora of options you have to deal with, and a lot of time your opponent presents to you, it's tough to be 100% yeah. on blocking stuff like that. I mean, after getting overwhelmed so much in that round already, I really like the gamble from Retro Mixup going with that overhead and just caught him sleeping. Yeah, Not even I mean, catching him sleeping, catching him looking for all the other options he already got hit with, really. We've talked about how explosive Soul is, but he has very simple, persistent, ambitious pressure. He just takes his turn and he, he keeps it going and he gets a read. But, you know, <laughs> that's that's all this character really needs to get started. You know, it doesn't have to be so pretty. He just needs a turn. Most definitely, exactly, yeah, and uh, all that predicates on stuff like this, like how clean your anti-airs are, and then the pressure in the corner, right, you talked about how it's not really any type of hard-to-see thing, it's just consistent yeah. and persistent, and then he conditions you with throws, which gets you to press buttons, which leads to the damage you never want to experience. Nice! Yeah, wow, speed. what an anti-air. Very clean. nice. And I love him backing up real quick, too, because the jump 2k does move Chip a little bit forward. So sometimes when you try to 6p from that distance, it gets, like, crossed up. And then you can, like, FD yep. block, right? I know you talk about that OS sometimes. But, like, he's there, right there, backing up first to make sure the 6p hit. That was really good. Yeah, it's hard, you know. Going back to that mental stack, you know. Chip, all Chip has to do is double jump once, and it'll call you off as well. So, yeah. you, know, you got to be ready. That was, that was clip. Why is he actually... I don't think he actually needed to do that. That was the banner revolver, but... You're just so used to taking pressure that you can't handle in the wire scene places you don't need to. Didn't get much off the trade and Red Eye's really running with it right now. Whittle him away and wow, the jump kick again. Mm -hmm. Ruling the skies, retro mix up. Trying to hold on to this hard here. He has one to spare, but doesn't want to surrender this round head, but oh. knows he's a wild throw away from it, but he's not going to bet on that. He's going to bet on the far wow. S and it gets DP'd instead. I'm surprised he didn't try to go with the RC just to try to get a burst or get free damage. Now Red Eye, of course, still holding on to his burst as well. So any type of big Ooh. early hit from Retro Mix, so I gotta imagine it's gonna be burst, yeah. Now we're hit off the trade, and there it is, the run up stand kick, no fear. Far slash turn, but the jump down kick, it's the throw immediately after. Yeah, this is real good stuff from Red Eye right now. Trying to bring him back. Oh, the hesitation 2D gets the counter hit oh. and then out of range. Yeah, doesn't beat the burst just yet. RC is trying to keep the pressure. But why RC to keep the corner pressure? My goodness. There's the throw. Oh, it's adding up way too fast. The Anyone's game here. Oh, the counter hit the RC. Make this combo work. Oh, yes. all the way through. Well done for Red Eyes. Clutching it out with the RC drift of wall run combo. That was very nice.
so clutch there, especially the no fear there. Like, uh, Retro Eyes was getting out of these trade kick situations, but that last one, uh, Retro Mixup got on Red Eyes there and really added it up quick. So I'm really impressed that they weren't afraid and brought it back. <laughs> yeah, wow. definitely good stuff. I, I really like the way both players are actually playing. Like, I'm glad that Retro Mixup has been staying on the ground more. We see a lot of that 5K coming out to deal with the air mobility and just ruling that chip is doing right of course he's been getting a lot of preemptive jump case but we've seen red eyes respond in kind as well right great 6p usage not only on the anti-air but also on the ground and just in general he's been able to find these openings and then make the most of them as you saw right there testing them with the stagger low and then immediately going to the rc drift up for the full wall run combo indeed i mean i'm impressed with red eyes scramble game you know they're, they're getting a lot of out of a lot of these situations that seem scary post trade I really oh, love that. The SDP after the plus frame jump 2k. Ooh, but another big bet on the DP and another paying it off for Red Eyes. Yeah, they had enough of that stand dust. Ooh, trying to find a moment and get the crowd slash with a stand slash right back at you. <laughs> Runs right behind the friend and comes in, but the DP. Yeah, the pay and all. Man grab right there. Ooh. Good cash out. Retro mix up. Trying to get this tie up. Yeah, my goodness, bro. The rounds that Chip loses are so fast. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah, committing to the 6H right there. You see the punish and the farness coming out, but it just actually goes with the Alpha Blade reset instead. And the, line of, the line of being so right and so wrong with Chip are so close. You know? Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh. Back to back with the SDP. You better be ready with these punishes. Not going to bait the burst this time, though. Another jump cave. This time is an air to air response. The oh. super, but he swings in. Oh, oh no! This time reversal possibly? Wow. Yeah, very unfortunate. That's plus frames as well. It's about to cross up. It's about to cross up again. YRC to put a stop to that game for now. YRC in response. Ooh. Retro Mixup has a burst though. Ooh, ah. he tried to bait it with a double jump. Didn't give it to him. No 6S catching. Not going to be able to kill just yet. Going to play respected for now. Yeah, back into the corner and tried to trade, but the far S from Soul wins clean. <laughs> The classic, bro. The far <laughs> slash. The bane of everyone's existence since open beta one, since closed beta one, whatever. Whenever a soul was first introduced in the game, I think far as has been that bully tool. And once again, we see it. Why it's so good? <laughs> Utilizing it in the neutral, just stuffing whatever chip wanted to do in that space. And I mean, when you're playing against soul, you got to keep that in mind, man. That that is his zone right there. You got to play around it. No, you said it like. It has been good from day one. You know, I'm still salty here since then, but, you know, I have to deal with it. I have to think of it. It is part of the game. And, you know, he did try to run up and, and steal that turn with the fast normal, but, you know, it might have been more about whiff punishment there. You might have won an FD break just a little bit right before to bait it on the incoming and capitalize there. Or maybe just a forward punch on a hard read or whatever. True. There are options, but, you know, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. It's hard out here. Almost oh, definitely, most definitely. You want to fall back on a lot of the buttons that you utilize a lot of the time to yeah. be successful in that neutral game. And it's just hard because a lot of the times you do need to go with, like you said, like a 6P or like the back dash or FD break into a whiff punish instead because it's just so hard to contest that far S, even with yeah. Chip having a frame faster far S. Yeah, you just kind of have to go with that intuition sometimes. So, like that uppercut right there, <laughs> back to back. Chip making the most of this. Yeah, I feel like both players have been super on point with their DB reads. Oh no, he actually got to oh. try to do something on the fast here, but still alive for now. 100% tension as well. You see the PRC slow down, but uh uh. Because oh. I'm trying to get an air to air going, but Retro Mix Up's close enough to the ground to actually get the anti air. Good pickup. And now again, the reverse. This is definitely a game five because the DPs are coming out in full force. Oh, I get him. Yeah, trying to DP as he landed that time, but no RC to make himself safe. Now he's susceptible to the man grab. Tries to go oh in back to back, but yeah, if you don't punish him on the way up, very hard to punish him on the way down. Yeah, you need to kind of commit strictly to it with like a late back dash or instant back dash. Ooh. Terrence not trying to give Retro mix up this corner carry and his damage as the corner for himself now. We've seen Retro be very, yeah, very disciplined about his burst. Doesn't give it to him yet. Oh my goodness, wall running away. Still trying to bait this out. Why are seeing instead holding on to that burst for Ooh. dear life? Oh no, oh, God! Man grabbed, and that's gonna force a final round. Man, Red Eye's not afraid, even though there was like five volcanic vipers around prior. <laughs> Why not keep that ambitious gameplay going? Ooh, 
Gonna prevent him from going to the skies once again, keep him nice and grounded. Daphne again, put some damage on him. Yes, that six has afterwards. Bandit Bringer Red Eyes wants out, but he is not letting him at this point. Why is he blocked him but not punished? What an alpha blade, but misses the combo. Kind of went for the burst bait. Swing it on a red eyes. Can't afford a oh. trade. Actually goes with a gold burst blocked and punished. Retro mix up. Clutching out the set in the very last round. Yeah, red eyes thought they had the ace in the pocket there with the gold burst near the corner, but it was a secret safe jump. I didn't even see it coming. Man, that jump heavy. Just so good. Just covering with the multi hit. Yeah, super good stuff right there from uh, uh, Retro Mixup. Just able to clutch it out, right? And yeah, it was uh, scrambles from both sides. You mentioned the Volcanic Vipers, but my man kept doing it. And Red Eyes showed no fear, right? That's what we talk about in fighting games all the time. Still being like maintaining the balance of stubborn and adjustment. It's, it's really cool to see. And I mean, it almost got him the victory, but Retro Mixup just a bit better today. True. I mean, Chip has to play that on and off game immaculately. And it was almost there. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, I did not hear if we're going to uh, the next match or what happened. Can you repeat, please? They say him. She did not hear, but regardless, uh, good stuff from our... Oh, it's the bracket, actually. I see Retro Mix-Up is going to be uh, okay. moving on to a winner semifinals. You see awaiting nice. the winner of Sasori and Akaral, which I think is going to be our next match, of it, course. It will be next. Okay. And then, but we will return the double M post that match. So All right, have, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So, yeah, this is going to be a, another good one for sure. Akerol, of course, one of the mainstays of the PlayStation tournaments. And he uh, runs, I believe, a couple of tournaments as well in the EU. I know he does some wanted qualifiers for the Damascus tournaments. But if you're looking to get involved with the PlayStation tournaments, remember, you can go to compete.playstation.com. Sign up for these monthly series. That's where you can find out information regarding Evo, Guilty Gear, Soul Calibur, Call of Duty, all kinds of stuff that PlayStation has in the, the uh, video game competitive sphere. All can be found there at compete.playstation.com dot com of course so of course today we are handling the monthly open series for eu as well as na we're gonna get acarol i believe up next going up against sasori sasori i always clown i think he's a giovanna player if i recall correctly but i always clown him because he's named after a puppet master and doesn't play the puppet character oh and always, Yo, always. I, I didn't think about that I, I like i like that that's that's some good facts right there so mm -hmm. sorry there they don't really they wrote on their facts they don't really know accomplishments so welcome to the finals you're about to write <laughs> some down on your resume today don't don't forget oh, yeah, and, he uh, is a giovanna player yeah yeah acro the leo player one of my og friends have uh shouted them out before and they have said uh they've gotten they've gone even in the mirror match with sonic fox as their biggest Ooh. accomplishment so that that's pretty big you know that should get you ready for these tournaments if you've been putting that time in because sonic fox one of the the greatest of all time they are amazing indeed and if you're ready for that then you're ready for our player card so sorry coming up i believe this is just a preview we're going to get the accurate so sorry player card hit in a moment he does play giovanna though which is funny because like as a uh, zato puppet master myself if i <laughs> zato wasn't in this game i'd probably play giovanna i think she's one of the coolest characters in the game very very fast we talk about her forward momentum all the time just making it so like her dash normals or just her normals that don't seem that far are actually like full screen just because of like she is on ice skates and then of course her air dash is super fast and i just uh, really like overall how she applies pressure in this game she feels great. I played her a majority of the beta two, and she has a great combination of fun, simple combos, advanced setups, great movement, and great normals. And you can't really go wrong with that. You know, long term, you're going to find a lot of cool intricacies and matchups and really flesh it along. And we're both Marvel players in the past. So yeah. it's a lot of uh, Giovanna players do come from, you know, air dasher type games. I've noticed there are a few Street Fighter players that, you know, mm -hmm. you could see those normals really emphasize there but yeah no i'd love to see how sasori is going to do here representing russia with that giovanna this character i felt feel is still very slept on you see her a lot I in agree. bottom six but mm -hmm. i would put her in a you know she yeah. has a lot of really good results and she gives a lot of characters a lot of problems yeah um also we brought up the china versus south korea 10 v 10 uh earlier today and tim the giovanna player from china was the one that did the most work on the team from what i, I saw believe um 
yeah, he was down to one of the final two and ended up taking like three or four of the Korean players down straight before falling himself. So we'll definitely see the Giovanna on display as well as the Leo, which we saw oh. in the EU versus uh, NA 10v10 actually via K7, another regular in the PlayStation <laughs> tournaments. But Akerol, you can see that win rate 92% in the PlayStation right. tournaments. Like this man, I believe, has taken a whole PlayStation tournament himself. And if not, he has at least gotten to grand finals a couple of times. So he is a monster on this Leo as well. You heard one of his accomplishments that nerd josh highlighted was the fact that he went even in the mirror match with sonic fox yeah, which is big. a yeah it is no slight feat whatsoever so yeah agarol is a very uh, adept at his character and i can't wait to see this match because it's going to be hard hitting fast paced both of these characters are definitely all about getting in your face so we're going to see who is superior today because again it's all about that any given sunday aspect of fighting games as well whoever Indeed. is best on this day yeah you could just wake up ready you, honestly, the, the matches that made you salty that Saturday and you slept on might be what needed you to get over that hill. So, you know, never get on yourself about your growth because it will just turn on any day. And this is why I'm excited because half this uh, survey here is all new blood. And this is a new game full of new faces doing damage. So I, I definitely want to see how this is going to turn out. But uh, also, let's go in on this Leo, man. Like, Giovanna downplayed, but Leo... In this game, you can't downplay Leo. Just so solid. Exer, yeah, but Strive, yeah. no, no way. Yeah, I mean, it, like when I think we saw the way Strive was uh, being fleshed out and the type of game it was going to be. I mean, we were like, oh, I could see Leo was already a Strive character, right? <laughs> like you no, put true. him from Exert and you put him in this system, and he has just excelled in the way that we thought he would. Especially because he's kept a lot of the same tools, and I mean, he has uh, lost some. Don't get me wrong, but then he's gained like the command grab and a few other things that I think are really good in this version of Guilty Gear. And yeah, I mean, he's in my top five. Um, I think K Seven is like an incredible leo player like i think he is so good and he is the person that i think really makes me think the character is top five i think sonic fox is a better player than him but in terms of playing leo the I, results like, of k7 case, just shows yeah you know? and k7 you know he's won tournaments with these big players and then he was part of the final two i think yesterday as well like i mean if not final two final three like the man is a monster so he's really the person that i think is playing leo at the highest capability to be played right now but yeah. yeah, like you said, Akerol is also like 12 and 1, 11 and 1 or something like this. He is definitely showing out for the character in EU as well. Yeah, this character is super explosive. So you, you definitely don't want to slouch. As somebody who like played the matchup religiously in the last game, this is a character that used to lose every matchup 6-4 out of 10. But, you know, you give it enough. This, this character could still win with Mad Jank. But you give them enough buffs and you put them in a game that's more fitted for their style. And Wow. <laughs> night and day this character just give me a turn this is beautiful but you know this character is also so fun to watch you know mm -hmm. it can take a turn out of nowhere and so explosive so i i'm really interested to see this this matchup between giovanna because two rushed out monsters like who's yeah. gonna steal this momentum and like it throws is so rewarding for both characters um giovanna just in general with her dash pressure on the close s it's so hard to read when she's gonna throw you i mean the meme is that she's one of the best grapplers in the game and she's one of the few characters that don't have a command grab right like that's how good <laughs> her throw and strike game is and then on the other side yeah leo i mean of course we can talk about the command grab but the fact that he gets back turn stance as a reward from regular grab on top of grabs already being as good as they are in this game sure he doesn't have a run but his dash definitely closes the distance in a lot of situations where he needs it to close the distance so like getting the fact that he gets back turn off that which is so dangerous in this game such a great mix of tool great ways to apply pressure like being able to uh, back turn uh stance cancel off of like the far heavy slash which is the the overhead for plus frames or you can pair or galling it into the parry like there's so many mind games to present and just in addition to it i think it's like a 16 frame overhead or something like that 18 frames is very hard to react to yeah i mean just Leo has that pressure where, you know, stance cancel, block strings after a while to tighten you up. And then, you, like you said, you're eating that high. You're e eating the double low eventually. And then mm -hmm. from there, you know, can go cross up, go whatever. Do Leo can do whatever they want. But, man, I'm always frames, so freaked out when the Liger Bomb comes out in this game. Because, you know, I am just not read ready for it. Th this character already had so many options before. And they gave even more. It's, it's like, yo. And the... Uh, that that throw from the stance does so much damage you know like when yeah. you get hit by that into the the stand kick otg it's like is it happening again should i just mash a button or am i gonna eat a close slash and just explode like you know there's 
it's a lot of things to think about against Leo, even though the pressure could seem very similar to what it always is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And just uh, that one layer, that one additional layer, right? It really is not just one additional layer. It's having to uh, take that into account in your mental stack, in addition to all the options before. So it's like you're adding one thing, but in, in reality, you're adding like the uh, like the requirement to kind of uh, juggle one thing in addition to all these other things, which I mean can just kind of overwhelm your already like maxed mental stack, right? Yeah, no, I'm glad you're emphasizing on it there because it's like I just had a a flashback to when me being cornered and I eat one <laughs> combo to a knockdown and super OTGs me to a wall break. You know, yeah. Leo has possibilities like this that are so strong where you could have the life lead and immediately lose that and have to guess again, even if you still have a lead by a little bit after. Yeah, and it looks like uh, we, our players are having uh, difficulty connecting to each other or connecting to the room. So we're remaking the lobby right now and trying to get them in to give everyone an update. But yeah, I mean, Giovanna versus Leo, two of the most explosive uh, characters in the game. And again, these are two regulars in the PlayStation tournaments as well. So Sorry and Akerol, both are doing very well. And yeah, you know, you talked a little bit about maybe the uh, players. I think one of the main criticisms of Giovanna early on was her low ceiling, right? A lot of people were like, oh, yeah. she's kind of basic. Like she's there's, dry. Yeah, yeah. There's not going to be these brc setups you're like how do i block that yeah exactly and i <laughs> i just think like her fundamental like strike throw game is good enough at that point to kind of carry her for a while and then when the players start doing the work as you mentioned like with the brc setups and just like in general a lot of the ways to open you up that are not like conventional or not just like kind of surface level that's when we're going to really see the juice of the character right and it's fun because we're kind of starting to get to that point a little bit in Guilty Gear Strive, right? Where we're kind of getting to layer two, layer three of a lot of these characters. And that's where it gets really scary. Like, that's when oh, you that's start seeing. Gear. Yeah, exactly. The maze start coming out with the beach bar, C setups. And I'm like, I don't have to just worry about the anchors and the dolphins anymore. I got to worry about the beach balls wreaking havoc, too. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it gets real scary. And it's getting to that time, which is very exciting. No, I agree. Like, you know, even in gear, we have seen the worst matchups overcome in tournament sets. And it's like this um, a character will learn when to clash during a situation they come across all the time and how to win the clash war. And then you get a counter hit trade for 70 percent off something that should have won the matchup. You know, even though it's a high risk gambit, you know, something when you're tied up, a character can pull something out like this in the game. So, you know, I'm glad you brought something else like that up, you know, because that's what's beautiful about guilty gear and character love does overcome in this game so don't give up you know stick with your characters yeah. but uh let's go on the mental stack for geo real quick before we go into the match that throw strike throw game is really strong as well you know like you said and you know when you get cornered by her you got to block that close slash which is mad annoying and then is she gonna dash up throw again or hit you with a multi low that has a lot of hits done so oh, it's like man. if you preemptively do anything you can lose right away you kind of have to react to the throw you know which yeah. is kind of hard to do there were so many times where i would like when i was first learning how to fight this Ooh. character where i would try to like fuzzy jump and just get hit by the second hit of that 2s you know it's not sure. annoying a lot of active frames there oh what Ooh. a cross up yeah it's a story yeah, he's already just... out here pulling the strings same with Aquarol though, just needed one hit to turn it but wow, right back at you. Yes. Windmill kick to the face. This is the time. Oh yes, and Aquarol trying to wake up with his own super. This is the game I was expecting here. And yes, yeah, so Asori trying to bait the burst right there. Aquarol didn't give it to him, but ends up getting thrown afterwards anyway. Yeah, the dash up grab was still respecting the stand heavy on a delay. Oh, the flip kick trade on the DP. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a sorry again. A huge combo off that you can see breaking the wall. Giovanna's one of our best combo starters. Oh, nice throw in the RC. My guy, Akron's got to spin his burst here. I mean, he's going to hold that because there was a lot of proration, but at that point, not waking up with the burst. Let's do it here off the jab punches. Got a PRC to make sure she didn't get hit by the uh, fireball. Ooh, coming in. No fear. Nice grab. Only living off one hair. Oh, get some super. Does it even matter how much health Acro has? Because they are saying, I'm committing. I'm going in. It's my turn, but gets the throw. 
Yeah, that is oh, not a true MIDI, I believe. So yeah. it, maybe it's very hard to time. But either way, yeah, even with the super frame advantage from the wall ray, you can still get thrown on that Berserker Slash. But yo, I really love Akerol's super right there. I can't believe he's supered in response to the BRC dash up. I'm really loving the responses I'm starting to see from stuff like that too, right? Because like at first when people started doing that, they would just get thrown because they got caught off guard. They're like, oh, wow. But now everybody's getting used to the situation. So people are like back dashing, they're jumping, they're using invincible moves like you just saw there again just like uh, the layers are getting deeper as we alluded to before the set started it's true i mean you get in someone's space are they gonna hit a button or are they gonna hit throw are they gonna back dash jump or block same thing when you empty jump in their face on wake up you know you get so much information there so you know Acarol had that read and went all in early on it wasn't a bad idea because they had no health anyways why not just take indeed, indeed. Oh, oh, nice. Exposing the Berserker Slash once again. Oh. The burst baits are strong this set. They are waiting. Nice counter hit. Yeah, the sword's still a little bit too close. I think from longer distance, that 2S my low profile, the burst, but that close, not going to happen. Oh, out of range here in the burst, but gonna get a clean hit. I like the FD on the backup of the bust in range. Catches the sword blocking low. And yeah, I blame like, Sasori, that crouch dust, he goes out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a button that Leo players really love to press too, so it's very common to have to deal with it. I know the Leo we play, he loves to do crouch dust <laughs> flash kicks all day. <laughs> oh yes, most definitely. Shout out to the tasty one. <laughs> nice super. Back roll turning it back. And the life leader oh, yeah. nice just going in front low D right there yeah i don't know if he was just like praying on the fact that he hit sasori with the charge dust last time was just like i'm gonna dash up do 2d <laughs> or what but i mean it worked out very smart stuff from akarol and i think that's one of the my favorite things about watching akarol play is the way he manipulates his opponent because he rarely gets manipulated himself he loves playing his game and he will just kind of like uh, like buck against the trend every time you try to do something to condition him he often has answers that will make sure you second guess the way you try to do that true that i mean was kind of going for the layer twos all around one and getting called out so kind of knew i gotta throw rock more i gotta throw yeah. that media and set the respect case in there you know you gotta earn the respect first sometimes so you know if you want to get those cool mix-ups <laughs> Yeah, most definitely. It's all about conditioning your opponent, right? Some of the times you need to make sure that they're sitting there and blocking for a longer period than usual before you can actually implement the mix-ups or the strategies that you want to do. And to do that, to condition them to that point, you got to make sure you just stay compact, stay tight with your meaties. But right now, it goes for the DP. No punish, though, but after all, going to spin the burst anyway, trying to keep her locked in this corner. Man, what an anti -er. She does it right back, but gets the hit and is able to push out the mid-screen and use that far end. Yeah, exactly. Both players is not really wanting to surrender any type of pressure that far as that time catching him. Ooh, I love this combo right here. Ooh, that was six. That would have jumped B into the wall, bounce into the wall, break. I love that slam move he has on the ground, too. It's just so hype. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yo, these Berserker Slashes, anytime they come after a normal, even sometimes Raw, they've been getting thrown. So sorry, been so consistent. No meter to break the wall with the super. So taking the charge does for optimal damage. 100% tension here for Akarol. Yeah, I love that. Oh. Waiting until she was back in range for the AoE slow to PRC. Gets opened up, but sorry, trying to hold on to this hard PRC to whip punish that. Akarol not getting rid of the burst just yet. Waking up with the jab, no fear. Right? Staying on it, playing with the fire in the cut. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, what a cross though. Yeah, it's gonna have to start coming out more raw. You see, Agarol kind of adjusting a little bit with the Berserker Slash gameplay. Hey, the headbutt counter hit. Yeah, taking a wall break as well with the super. So this is plus frames. Let's see, he got thrown out of the Berserker Slash last time. What's he gonna do? Tries it again, it gets thrown out of it again. Now the sword is backing up actually. Maybe waiting for that positive meter to go down, but whip punish. Oh no, a bit of a desperation burst right there. Wanted the gold version, right? The gold burst in this game is like the comeback mechanic of this game, right? Like 100% tension is so powerful. It allows you to kind of uh, just have so many more tools to get your game started and neutral. And like, 
I feel like you don't even need the RC a lot of the time once you get the hit, right? It's all about using it yeah. to get there in the first place. And that's what the Gold Burst 100% tension allows you to do. But unfortunately for him, his opponent was looking for it a little bit too hard, and he was out of range to do so. Gave it out. And I mean, if you land that offensive burst, the Gold Burst, you know, it comes back twice as fast, too. So in a matchup where the... In a matchup where the character, you know, has problems landing that blue burst due to burst safe combos, you know, it might be a good strategy to try to go for that gold and use the extra meter to try to find that crafty hit. 100%. Yeah, if you get an early gold burst on, some of the time your opponent just doesn't play, right? Because yeah. if you get 100% tension, it also allows you to bait their burst easier as well. Mm hmm. Oh, man. These dash up far S's is doing so much work with them. So many active frames. What a crouch does on counter hit. Yeah, one of the best move buttons in the game in terms of hitbox. Just a full deletion space in front of her like that, as you saw. Exposed the Leo. Oh. And now at the wall once again. He's going to be able to survive this. He's a beefy boy, but he's going to have to guess for game fairly soon here, I believe. Ooh, tries nice to commit to the back. Berserker Slash. And yes, the Sori has been having such a great defense against the Berserker Slash all set. I believe that's the jump back slash. Really hard to anti her. Whoa, the burst right away. Try to get the crouch dust this time, but was out of range. What a flip kick. And the burst, I went too big damage coming. Oh, long distance on that one. Actually just trips her up for the OTG, trying to keep that pressure going. That dash up, close as trying to start the Giovanna game, but still in the corner. Quick RC to expose the ankles. Ooh. Retaliates on the dust and out of the corner, but for how long? Black will bring her back. No, the dash bar S into the super. Is she close enough to the corner? No. But has that knockdown? Oh, jump back H. Oh, yeah. We always talk about the whiff recovery. Yeah, so Sori had the burst available at the very end. They were just going to hold on to it for the next round. Yeah, the whiff recovery for throws in this game is quite significant. So if you do not have the RC to OS with, it'll definitely be exposure city once they fall down. Yeah, you can call it out with the counter hit normal. Wow, actually interrupting the whip kick with that 2k. After all, needs to interrupt some more of this pressure. Not going to be able to at this point. RC drift up. Get in the beautiful wall carry. Love the combo from Sori. Love that jump dust. And I mean, block the cross up, but not the follow up. And woo, not a lot of health here. Gotta watch out. Yeah. So Sori. Air to air. I thought it was an air grab, to be honest. I was about to get mad hurt for my <laughs> GG, but it might have called out the tech throw attempt there. Smart. Yeah, really good stuff from Zasori right there. Bouncing back once again. Really just shutting down pretty much Agarol's game that whole match, right? Going to be forcing a game five coming out from both sides now. And it's been close. Each time, both players have kind of adjusted well to the other's game plan. Nobody's really let a lot of free pressure go by. We've seen the Berserker Slashes get thrown over and over again. I feel like there hasn't been a lot of like free Spiral Arrow or Burn Kick pressure attempted from Zasori either. There's a lot of respect being shown to Agarol. So this has been good Guilty Gear, man. No, I agree. Honestly, uh, I think the health bar has been kind of irrelevant. It's been more about the momentum bar. They've just been fighting it out in each other's faces, showing enough respect to hang on when they need to, but really trying to take their turn and get those hard reads in. Yeah, you can see again, Sasori has not really uh, tried to test them with any type of spiral arrow or burn kick pressure. It's been whip kick on block pretty consistently. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of DP since like that first round. So. We just sorry thinking about that a little bit more. Shut down with the back turn slash into the Liger Bomb. We talked about it. We're finally seeing it here in game five. Oh, the super. Did I guess you're doing something? It oh. did. Oh, I not, couldn't tell what she was actually committed to, but it did look like an animation. And just flowing through the rest of her health bar, she blew through the glass. The super is frightening in the low, just dashing up. This is where you don't want to be game five right now. Nice throw. Turn it around, the story. What a close yeah. match here. And that's why Akron bursted, right? He did not want that momentum. You talked about the momentum bar being so important in this matchup. And he's trying to keep it on his side. Ooh, yeah. skating down, but still punished. Now, what was the momentum bar does? Oh. Right? Of course, for that super hit confirmed. Doing massive damage. No health at all for Tesori. Could be ended at any moment. What a trade on the counter hit. The jump does combo. It's beautiful into the forward heavy. Oh yes, well, Sori's going to be able to wall break as well. Akron's 100% tension, though. Yeah, oh. he's going to be able to do whatever he wants. 
Dasha oh. with the super catches the sword. He's trying to do something and once again taking it all. <laughs> I, I really just want to highlight how good oh. that far slash counter hit or whatever button it was oh. directly into the super was for Akarol because it put her on a magic pixel and it locked her out of doing burst. That was one of the best things he could have possibly done right there because she still had burst available after that counter hit and she was definitely going to use it if he committed to anything but the super, but he did the super very smart. You see how big the super hitbox was? It was like, that was the real astral projection forward P. That was, that was hype. Yeah, that was a uh, really good stuff. And I believe we are, was that a break or a bracket call? I'm sorry, I'm having a couple of difficulties. It no, is bracket, a bracket call. So I believe you talked about, right? It's going to be double M versus Guilty Gear Strive Flame for our there last match for the, the winner's bracket. Uh, yeah, and to see who actually uh, faces Goga, our chip player, from the very first match where he was able to take down Heapski in a close set. See who actually is going to stay alive here and who's going to drop down to the lower bracket. Oh, yeah. And I don't really see any notes here for these players. So this is exciting for me because Ooh. new blood. You know, I've been playing this game for almost 20 years. We were talking about it on Twitter earlier about old XX days. I know a lot of this scene and I've seen a lot of people grow up and even come to this game at first game players and be amazing first time. So to see all these new players coming in is awesome. That's they're getting involved now signing up with compete.playstation.com. You know, the PlayStation Open Series covers not just guilty gear you know it goes across call of duty madden all these other games but you know we're in the evo season we've had so many hype games for different games you know gundam even you know i i, I went oh, yeah. and bought it right after watching man these tracks i grew up with all yeah that's a good point right there's so many Great games that are in this PlayStation fear over at compete.playstation.com. You'll be able to find a bunch of stuff, whatever genre you're interested in. Of course, we're all about the fighting games right here with the Guilty Gear Strive, the Tekken, everything else. But of course, we also have the Call of Duty, the Gundams, as you mentioned, which is kind of its own type of 3D kind of fighting game, right? But I do want to find out something about these players that you alluded to, Josh, because they are new to the scene. I believe we're going to have GGST Flame or Double M up here first. Double oh, M. And no yeah, they, both of these players are actually 18 years old. So they're really new blood, like not even just new to the game, but very young guns coming up. And you can see he's going to be rocking the Milia as well. High speed, high mobility, going to be putting those young man reactions at... Uh, at control for this piloting <laughs> hey i'm glad you brought that up because you know with if we're gonna have two uh young guns coming up that is one thing i miss from my old school gaming is <laughs> how good my reactions were back then and i was so persistent on my combos back then so i'm ex i'm excited to see you know the technicalities of these players you know they, they might be able to do some things that you know an older player might have to look ahead more for these players might be able to just do it on a whim and you know sure pull out some uh, amazing gameplay that you know might just hit a grand slam out the park who knows and yeah, definitely a good stuff to flame as well making it i believe he rocks the Anji and as well as the chip so definitely nice. two characters that are going to be on display here i think Anji actually might have a decent time against milia if he so chooses that way just because of like his massive damage output that is something that Anji does have certain starters especially that anti-air starter could just delete a character's health bar and milia of course, <laughs> of course the second lowest health in the game so she could definitely explode by that. But yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it, man, because both of these players, like you mentioned, are very young, very new to the scene. One's in Sweden, one's in London. I mean, Europe has been on display here. We've got uh, Russia representation, French representation. Like, it's just a beautiful thing to see uh, the ability that this netcode allows the uh, in the way the community comes together. Yeah, honestly, it's amazing just to see everyone coming at it. It's so competitive. And I, I'm actually excited to see this Angie because, you know, this character is downplayed a little bit. But I think for kind of good reasons, he does need some quality of life. But he does have some really cool stuff about him as well. And a lot of people aren't perfect at this matchup. You know, I thought I was yeah. even good at it. And I lost to James Shea at Wednesday Night Fights when I got top four. I had to run it all the way back. And it was the Angie that brought me down, you know. So do not sleep on that dance, you know. Angie comes comes out there looking extra sexy. You got to respect it. You know, if, if he gets that twirl off, you're going to eat a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the, the twirl auto guard comes from. It's just from the bare chest, from the gains of Anji. You know what I mean? He just is able to eat a, a hit of armor like that. But yeah, I mean, if you do not respect the twirl, it'll definitely expose you, right? Because a lot of the time, the yeah. Anji players that are good at utilizing it, they will do it at ranges where you are usually committing to some type of heavier option, right? Uh, a lot of the time, it's going to be from a little bit far away where you're trying to look for, like, for Amelia, for in 
for instance, like a hair car or something like that, yeah. some type of option that is going to end up leaving you more exposed than you normally would be. And yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm always interested in seeing how the parry usage is for the Anjis as well, if they're kind of like parry happy with the super attempts or if they're kind of reserved just utilizing the threat of it existing or if they're actually going to like try to condition the opponent to respect it actively. Indeed, uh, the super can beat safe jumps and you can react to certain block strings with it consistently. So yeah. the knowledge game there is going to come in, you know, will they fall back to call the Angie out, etc. You know, so I'm wondering where that respect's going to come because, uh, you know, Angie's really interesting. Like, I like how we we're talking about the twirl. You brought out how it calls out neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, Angie has a really good sweep and he has a really good instant air dash. So, you know being able to call out mid neutral with that twirl and get them hesitant to start using other moves you know it allows angie to be more comfortable in that rushdown approach so yeah. well. and, and milia as well right a six frame character no invincible reversal unless she has meter for it so i mean she can get bullied uh, a bit easier yeah. than some of the other characters by that angie pressure of course she'll still have answers as one always does up against like the fujin follow-ups but it's all about uh, utilizing that meter as well for angie i think that's a, a big thing about the character is your resource management because the character does like we said have some struggles when it comes to like i think consistent real pressure when you actually are familiar with the matchup but having rcs can kind of mitigate that a little bit with some of the nasty quick rc lows that we've seen and just in general ways to condition the opponent to block that are real and will leave you susceptible to getting hit and eating that big damage that we alluded to before indeed now i'm excited here too because the double m do you think double m's a double l fan Is he a possible <laughs> dragon ball player that would be I love Ginyu. Please tell me you play Ginyu as well. You know, that would get me hyped. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're not actually going to see the Anji, though, right? We are going to see the chip. So right now, it's just going to be high speed action, uh, least health character versus second least health character. So, yeah, I mean, whoever's getting hit is going to explode, even with these characters not having yeah. the highest damage in the game. True, that's not the Anji fans, but, you know, we're playing for money here. We're going to put the best <laughs> card on the table. Yeah, been following with that blade blade already and trying to kind of test double m's anti-air game that close s is a really good oh. button for anti-airs when it comes to milia but it's hard wow. to do so against chip but you know what's not hard is the mix-ups and open him up over and over again this time with the cross up this time staying on the same side then delaying it into the cross up my goodness yeah double m really doing the most with that double air dash here and wow the jump back to the lows good block this time but the bad moon's coming yeah, Gustav from Flame most likely realizing that Double M wants to prioritize taking the corner back as well with the cross up. So he was able to block that one, but yeah, the overhead bad moon coming in so fast. Oh, yeah, that moon's made of cheese. Bad cheese, you know? <laughs> definitely. With the way people feel about it, most definitely quite <laughs> cheesy indeed. Oh, wow. Actually going into the air and just coming out with the gem 2K as Double M was falling. And just bullying yeah, with that. Kick. Oh, Bruh, it's empty. They, yeah, can you believe that? That's how threatening that jump 2K option is, bro. He actually just uh, empty jumped into a low in neutral. Like, that's wild. Yeah, I mean, you have to tighten up against that move unless you're sure. And you, when you're sure, you're only trading with it <laughs> at best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is so difficult to deal with. Nice. Good stuff from Double M, though. Yeah, still applying that pressure even after getting burst and it found his way back in and still ruling the skies on the ground. Oh, oh. yeah, exposed by that DP and actually finding the button, the safe jump that he wanted. Nice, Man, that's that so good. Dude, that jump slash is such a good button for Milia. And that's the Indeed. thing is, is that Chip likes to be in the air a lot, right? So instead of trying to anti at a jump 2K, I really like the Milia's going with the cow pull and the jump S, like just trying to beat him in the air. Yeah, we definitely seen Punk do it a thousand times, you know, mm -hmm. dictate the ground neutral and just force the air and call it out. Oh, again, cashing out on these double air dashes. I don't blame that burst and the combo here to the RC. Burst right back. Yeah, really good discipline for double M right there. Waiting until he saw the normal come out after the burst made attempt to burst. Kick Alpha Blade in the leaf throw. That's the guest again. And yes, return to the kick Alpha Blade. Cross up in the air. Man, that yeah. pressure just coming, Ringe. 
feels bad, man. Honestly, like he had the command <laughs> throw at the end, and then had to guess for the game on the alpha blade, and just wasn't blocking the cross up, and that's all the damage he needed. We talked about these characters and their low health, and yeah, I mean, it, it's tough, right? Just being in that scenario, he feels like it's all in that moment, and you got to make that clutch defensive decision. And when it doesn't work out, it just feels bad. But you got to shake it off, right? That's why we play a three out of five set. It wasn't the match to actually put you down into the lower bracket, so quick uh, or short-term memory right that's what all the the great competitors <laughs> have so you gotta shake that off no you do have to shake it off you know i agree when you said feels bad man i've been playing gold lewis all week so i know in this matchup i have to guess a lot yeah. but honestly if you know he's just doing two different things three different things and being so telegraphed with it chip is a character you can pinata you can get mm -hmm. that hit make that candy go everywhere get that 85 percent cash out combo so you have to be ready for it, but let's see if Double M can turn it around here. I mean, they were having good air to airs, good neutral call outs, good double air dashes, but man. Yeah, right. I, I definitely felt like a Double M did a lot of work in that first game. Just did not come away with the W that time. Now, baiting the burst after the DP as well is going to give Flame an opportunity to continue his pressure, and he finds the anti air, has a lockdown in the corner. Now, onside from long distance. Oh, no. That just drops. Right? There's Probably that light character bounce early combo. Mm, that's a good point. Ooh, just dashing, command dashing to the other side right there. We were trying to beat on the same side instead of the cross up that time, but playing not falling mm. for it. He'll open up the alpha bay despite the RC attempt. Right? The BRC was almost so pretty there. I was <laughs> about the <to> screen. <laughs> Right now, yeah, just getting out of that space with that jump 2K. Double M has been in control for so much of this round, but it's on the verge of getting out of his hands, and it is with that bait on the burst. Flame bringing it back once again. And you get caught by the kick alpha, and then you just get jump dust back to the ground, and you gotta deal with it again? It's all so much trouble. Nice low start up to the disc, and right away back to the low. Yeah, very smart. Again. Speed. A little bit late on that cross-up attempt, I think. I think the biz still hit on the same side, but it doesn't matter. Double M. Bad moon for the corner carry. I always love seeing that as well. Oh, the close and that close miss. slash. What it is. Amazing normal that uh, uh, Milia has. Honestly, yeah. I feel like that move doesn't get talked about enough. You see so many hits from just run up close slash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, close slash is definitely like the button that uh, her ground neutral revolves around. It's a good anti-air button, as you mentioned. It's a great pressure tool as well. It's just, uh, yeah, the stuff that she really starts on a lot of her partying off of. Ooh, and getting that disc off the throw. A lot of characters cannot, I mean, can disrespect that setup there. I mean, if you go to the they can jump out immediately and commit to other options. So, I'm interested. And then again, you see that jump as just locking Chip down as soon as he takes to the skies. Super, super good. Again, fishing for it here. The Cowboy as well, he's a little bit too far away. Very smart. Oh, got that jump in. But right back at you. Man, they're just having trouble getting a clean combo off these jumpings. But all this damage is adding up weak characters all around. Nice grass. Yeah, Flame. Ooh, has to weather the storm here. He does successfully, not respecting the second hit on that jump button. You want to see the slow her down, but still can't find an air throw or anything like that. That big jump heavy slash hitbox has been posing mad annoyance for playing. Oh, the anti air counter. The jump K. Whoa, Goldberg with. Oh, jumps out of it that time. And then the late <laughs> jump heavy slash after making a block the first one, just catching him out the scramble. My goodness. That was like the entire round in that final game or that final round in that game was just scrambles on scrambles. <laughs> right. I mean, like no one can get a clean combo around anywhere. But Double M was like, yo, all these double air dashes have been working. I'm going to just go back to this anyways and closed it out in the end. That was wild. Yeah, and that's the thing is that even though uh, neither player could really get full clean combos, like their health being so low, those hits add up, right? All those stray jump heavy yep. slashes and the stray jump normals that were hitting on both sides. Like it ended up bringing both of their health bars pretty down low. So, yeah, I'm going to see if this time in Flame, it looked like whenever he got Double M on the ground, he did try to sneak in that command throw. That was kind of like his pace breaker. Yeah. Um, but Double M caught on to that at the very end, right? And it was able to jump out of a clutch uh, command throw attempt. So definitely good stuff from Double M bouncing back here. Close set from both of these players so far. Get up to burst. 
Yeah, honestly, I want to see this later approach because they but both going at it against each other. This rush down on rush down action. Here's the throw to the disc again, and he's respecting it. I, I'm pretty sure you can get out of that setup, and if they commit to the jump K, I'm pretty sure you can forward punch. So. Now over the world again with the jump heavy slashes. Oh, and then the low mods in this quick game for double M. Because these broken wings are gonna break your body. Oh, perfect. Rel relentless pressure. Don't let your opponent play. Always a sound strategy. Ooh, yeah, I'm glad playing Challenger out there. I can't just let Amelia put the disc on you in neutral like that. A lot of stars. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Breaking the wall again. He's got plenty of tension as well. Already 50% tension. So if he gets in there, he can just RC keep the pressure up. Not actually RC in that hit right there. I thought he would have. Instead, RC in here, you can see the tension building continuously, though, nullifying that meter penalty for the RCs. And even though Amelia got out, I like his approach of just, oh, nice reversal there. Gets the combo. I like the approach of just using the stand kicks and keeping safe pressure on and watching her jump and just trying to follow her. You know, she didn't have a lot of health. She was a throwaway. She took a trade and got out, but didn't have much to work with and close it out. <laughs> Jump movie slash coming out again. Ooh, jump out of the hit of Lee command grab. We talked about that, right? Flame has been kind of going to that and went over it. But he, uh, catching on to it, but he hasn't been able to catch on to these DPs. <laughs> the air to air. Wow, oh, with a bash. Just as I say that, he actually baits one out there. He's gonna get the full <laughs> punish, but still. Nice block with the low. There's always a follow-up. Ooh! Yeah! Cross up that time. Command dash, but he actually gets thrown for it. A little bit too close. Chip was ready. Now he's got the corner. 50% tension as well. Gets it oh. the RC. Ooh, and the wall run instantly. Gonna be able to break the wall and take Ooh. the game off of it. Dang, that was mad damage. Yo, Flame, give that 2-1. That was clutch. Like, honestly, I, I thought Double M was going to take that in the bag, that round three. But nah, saw the low the first time hit, committed to the back dash RC on the second attempt, and it worked out, even if there was no burst there. That was how the first game went for me, too, was I felt like Double M was in control most of the time, and it was just somehow not in his favor at the very end, right? He ended up falling to Flame. And, I mean, Flame now has a 2-1 lead. If you're Double M, that's like, it's kind of a weird feeling I imagine you got to have because I feel like you've been in control so often, but you haven't gotten as many Ws as you feel like you should have. So it's it's rough because you feel kind of robbed, but you should feel confident in your play still. It's definitely going to be tough. Some inner turmoil should, going on, I think. No, definitely. You should take a breath because, you know, that mental stack in the corner was blocking the wreck of first hits fine because of the gap, but was eating the lows both times. And it's like you're looking ahead and you're forgetting even past the save option. You, you got to remember there's a there's one more step in. <laughs> step B. Yeah, that's true. Step away. At the bonsai from long distance. Yeah, trying to kind of close the distance that time with the cowboy. Because right now, Flame is just trying to maintain that space that he wants, right? Ooh, until he gets her on the ground and sneaking in the command throw once again. Now, one round away. Yeah, and I like Flame's approach with like stopping these block strings to the 2k and then letting Milia play for it. Flame, you know, that's pretty strong. Oh man, yeah, the far S's have been working out. That's three hits this round. All oh. of it far S's. And this time he has the mirror to go with the wall oh, combo. Fortunately, not here. Oh yeah, the what first a mix. Hit came with him. And yeah, punishing with the disc that time. Oh no, drop the combo. Still has the quarter here. No, kick Alpha out. Oh, the cross, no combo, but going for the RC pressure. Nice low. It's adding up here. Gets the jump in. Oh! oh. Yeah, the level with a clutch cross up at the end as well. Force a final round here, trying to stay alive in this set. Of course, still turn or not turn point, excuse me, set point. Yeah, double end, trying to tie it up. Oh, he jumps down kick. Oh, getting the low starter. Nice. Okay. What a cross up. I love that. Yeah, taking the corner back right there, going to be able to wall break as well. We'll turn to the neutral. We're going to see a jump S. No, actually just backdashing off here, not wanting to contest in the air just yet. Oh, what kind of action looks like? Executionary bad moves or something, but either way, the jump S does rear his head here. Quick, quick, get to the wall. 
so close. There was a Dencha gonna RC1. Oh, the far as again. Oh, it made the burst perfectly with the drift back. Uh -oh. We've seen Double M comfortable here, getting the wall combo. Not a lot of health. Has to make sure. Oh, wow. what a throw! Double M, yeah, making him block the jump S, and I believe he did block that in the air, so he respected the amount of block stun that he was taking in on that moment, and Double M used that opportunity to sneak in with a throw very clutch to force a game five. Okay, I just want to watch more games, and with the rush down, rush down matchups back to back, let's go, another game five. Man, it, it really came down to the corner there, you know. But fire was lighting it up on the wall getting the burst baits getting the damage but you know they were able to be extinguished you know oh, by that yeah. double m mix-up game you know just three knockdowns and a diss and all chips life is just gonna disappear and that uh, you know one of our other chips life has not disappeared yet red eyes actually taking down sasori and losers three to two just to give you guys an update about what's going down over there so his chip is still alive of course Sasori's giovanna one of my favorite players to watch actually uh, falling out of the tournament so far but we're gonna decide who gets into that winner semis right now this is game five between flame and double m Ooh, Two hornets going at it in the sky. <laughs> They're just let's get, a, let's get the microscope out. Mm -hmm. There's definitely all types of air battles, air mobility on heavily on a heavy display here. You can see Flame trying to get out of that range where Double has been so successful with Melee. Yeah, he's the jump S, the heavy slashes have just been kind of ruling that spot. Yeah, finally actually does get the bad moon out, but immediately punished, bursting out to not give Flame that momentum. DP to take that momentum. Yeah, and just the wire seat off. No leaf throw here. And tried to get the run under, but the pressure after didn't go for the straight punish. It was like, hey, I'm going to open you up when you think you're going to get something on me. But right back at you with the grab. You thought it was your turn? Nah, let me block one normal. I know you're scared of me. Yeah, I love Flame waiting to burst until Double M actually crossed up right there to make sure that she was going back towards the corner. So he got immediate pressure. That was very smart. Yeah, might have been just waiting for a second normal, but... Before I could even finish talking, an air to air combo to break the wall here. Positive tension, double M trying to bring it back to this tied round situation. Mm -hmm. Must have oh. that final round, the PRC pressure, not exactly what he was looking for. Ooh, yeah, trying to get that mix. Always ruling the ground, Bonsai with the RC. Oh, and she snuck to the other side as well. Double M, I don't think, expecting that. Would have burst out here, 50% tension. Doesn't actually get hit by the AoE slow, unfortunate. The bring back a nice block. Almost jumped out with the slash, but still in the pressure. The risk adding up with the throw in the corner here. Gets out with close slash. Flame doesn't start burst in the hair card. Delay doesn't combo. Wow. Over oh, first. Never mind. Combo and play. Cooking. Yeah, the gold burst afterwards, too. That's a, one of the uh, situations you really got to train yourself up against Chip. Anytime they burst successfully or anything like that, that range that you're left at, they love dashing up and far assing right there, which is what we <laughs> saw. You know what I mean? It's just one of the best options in the game. So you got to really kind of train that situation to see what your option is the best at. But right now, let us see how the bracket has played out because I believe that was our last upper bracket round one match. So you can see Flame Ooh. has moved on to face Goga. So I believe that's going to be a chip mirror in one of the yeah. upper bracket semifinals and the upper the other side is going to be retro mix up versus Acherall, soul versus leo my goodness chip soul and leo all here in our upper bracket as semis <laughs> definitely characters Strong. that we expect to see there exactly and red eyes as i mentioned was able to take down so in that lower bracket round one to move on for now but we'll have double m and heapski going to be taking place off stream as well but it's been a dope tournament so far dope matches all the way through and if you're looking to uh, participate in one of these future playstation tournaments you can go to compete.playstation.com sign up for guilty gear all the plethora of fighting games and in general the competitive video games that the playstation community has built up and is just a part of showcasing over and over again with the competitive scenes yeah honestly you want to get involved and this is great practice for offline and honestly if you play other games too why not try yeah yeah exactly it's always a, a fun time competing right like it's uh, all about how you kind of approach that uh tournament kind of mind state in the first place right you can't really go into it expecting to win when you're just beginning but it is valuable experience and just kind of getting into that tournament mindset will improve you rapidly honestly if you take it quite uh seriously so hopefully you all
all this quick break that is coming up to go over to compete.playstations.com and check it out. We will be right back with more Guilty Gear Strive action. Please do not go anywhere.
Welcome back once again to the monthly finals for the PlayStation Tournament. Today, we are representing Guilty Gear Strive in the EU region as well. My man, Nerd Josh, holding it down with me. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing great, honestly. We've been seeing a lot of Guilty Gear Strive action going, a lot of new blood, a lot of a couple OGs hanging in there. You know, the Europe representation for this game has been incredibly strong. And with all these rushdown matchups, I want to see more because it's just been in your Face. Yeah, and let's take a look at how it's all shaped out so far, right, with the bracket. It's been good matches from top to bottom, as you alluded to. Goga able to take down Heapski, Flame able to take down Double M. So we're going to see a chip mirror in our upper bracket semis, one half of it at least. And then we got Retro Mixup taking down Red Eyes 3 2, and then Akaral taking down Sasori in another 3 2. Very close calls in those upper bracket round one matchups. And they're going to be facing each other with that Soul Leo. More action, more combat we're going to be able to see very quickly on that oh yeah man this is gonna be exciting yeah most definitely i can't wait to get into it once again of course i believe the polls are gonna be open up for this match as well i believe we're gonna be starting with that goga that chip mirror the goga and the flame match we'll see though i'm excited to see either way right just because they're gonna be very high paced high octane characters it's gonna be either chip versus chip or soul versus leo so either way i'm excited to see it yeah, be sure to get those votes in. I will say the the survey was updated and Flame had a write-in and basically said, this is my first performance in Guilty Gear Strive and in a game in general. And I want to say welcome because you made it in the cream of the crop and good luck today because you've already continued further in the bracket and winners and you're one away from near the, the top three thrones. So yeah, that it should be. This should be pretty fun to have the mirror, you know, going to get it here. And both players really solid. Yeah, for sure, right? And yeah, it's always good to see new blood going up against uh, some of the more experienced players. I think Goga has been around the block for a little bit. But either way, both of these ship players can get around the block very quickly, right? A number of times. That's going to be the name of the game. Who can kind of tame the other? Who can kind of utilize their speed and all the character strengths the best? And it's going to be it's going to be a tough one. I just don't know how much these players have played the chip mirror, right? He is, I think, a yeah. decently popular character. So you might have played it uh, once or twice. I'm also interested in seeing maybe one of them has like a counter pick because they don't like the mirror that much and it's not necessarily a counter pick but something they're just more comfortable with than playing a mirror match hey i'm glad you brought that up because you know it's a constant discussion a lot of people do not like the mirror match so yeah do you have a backup for it or are you comfortable and you you really want to show that knowledge yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, who was it? I think it was Richard Wynn that tweeted recently that was like, D the the uh, honest truth about mirror matches is that most people don't like them because they make you feel the worst when you lose them. It's not necessarily <laughs> that it's, it's random that a lot of people like to call it or whatnot. It's just that at the end of the day, you know you're playing against someone who is as familiar with your character's tools as you, and when you lose to someone like that, it's not about being unfamiliar with who you're playing against, right, or with what you're playing against. It's usually a lot of the time they just use the tools better than you and it's it's a hard pill to swallow but it's one that you got to if you're trying to improve in the game so we'll see who takes it this time one chip is going to be in winners finals it's going to be flame or goga and we're going to find out right now oh yeah let's see how that respect game plays out because like you said having the same tools in the matchup it comes down to more player style and and player read you know so can they get that edge on what their opponent wants to do Ooh. The pressure is on in the mix. The Clippers, though, knew they would go for a mix. Yeah, most definitely. Ooh, the 6K overhead <laughs> exposing them. Kind of waited for the burst, but... Man, the pressure is still on again. Yeah, the jump 2K lockdown. Really useful up against Ship himself. Yeah, getting that free damage with the wall burst immediately. Good block on the cross up. Ooh, again. Yeah, man. And that's what we talked about, right? You talked about the, the box on the cross up. He's just familiar with this character's tool set. So he's not going to get caught off guard by a lot of cheap shenanigans that usually will expose people more unfamiliar with the Metro. Yeah, but it is a move that you kind of you have to start with to get your opponent thinking, you know? 
stance in the set. Looking for DP afterwards as well, but Goga is keeping him locked down. Flame this time, but with his own DP, but not baiting out the response from Goga. Oh. Still has a burst available here. He's gonna have to utilize that. I think in a gold burst type fashion, but he's not even gonna get to do that. The hidden leave making itself known. 1 0 already. Yeah, very clean from Goga. Even with the dropped RC situation there, you know, was able to just overcome the neutral, get a leaf grab on the respect, on the block, and was just in there. Yeah, exactly, right. And we've seen that a, a couple of times from uh, both of our chip players, right? Really utilizing that command grab for the round ending scenarios. Those scenarios where you're just kind of scared to press anything because you don't have health to trade or like uh, give your opponent any type of openings. And that's when you're most susceptible to that throw. And yeah, it's been great utilization from both of our chips so far. This time it was just Goga that was able to uh, strike first. I mean, I don't blame him. All that chip pressure, you know, you, you're going back and forth a lot. And then all of a sudden some throw gets you because you're just looking for the, the left and right. It's like, ouch, come on. I'm supposed to jump and get hit randomly? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, as an update for our lower bracket round one match, Heapski was able to take down double M three to one. Nice. Yeah, so Heapski, Kai, Kisk still alive. Got the Kai fanboys out there. Keeping the good alive. The good guys out there. Mm -hmm, the protagonist. <laughs> Pro swagonist. That man is definitely like, he is uh, the uh, prototypical anime protagonist. <laughs> oh my Ooh. goodness. The <laughs> protagonist. <laughs> oh, the throw, okay. Another DP was coming to be on. Yeah, for real. Ooh, out invincible the other. Oh no, try for an anti version that time, but he was blocking or blocking it in the air causes a little bit more difficult for a punish. Oh, and then he just actually DP yeah. through the gamma blade. <laughs> you, you do have to air FD those those air reversals. Oh. Yeah, the DPs are uh, not being afraid to be shown. What in the oh. world? Was that with Rekka? It should have been a DP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a DP. It definitely should have been a DP. That was so funny. Just seeing the reversal window and then the Rekka coming out is not an image I'm used to. They can eat the respect of that. Really yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, nah, I know you're looking at the DP, so I'm just going to Rekka. Oh, oh, what happened? The weight? These things, perhaps? Oh, what, what's going on? Oh, no. I haven't seen this. Yeah, I'm not sure. There, there has, I think, been uh, DC issues in the past, but I don't know either way. Yeah, it definitely looks I, like something uh, issues up at the moment. Yeah, it might be a spectator D thing, but uh, regardless, that just means that they're going at it to where the game can't even keep up. <laughs> yeah, most definitely right now. What, what a situation to have this into with the chip mirror. I mean, it looks like he's gonna be able to throw, yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah, trying to check something there with the punches. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, the, the chip mirror is always a, a volatile match, right? It's very quick, very high paced, and I mean, yeah. I think they re maybe it's a full on desync. Yeah, it definitely seems like uh, something happened, unfortunately. But we will get that taken care of and find out the information as soon as possible. So. We will uh, get that sorted out. But thanks, everybody, for sticking with us through it. Of course, the online fighting games aren't perfect, unfortunately. But we will make sure to uh, shore up that technical difficulty very soon. Of course, because I do want to see this chip mirror, man. It is definitely one of these matches that I just enjoy seeing personally because, you know, chip causes me a lot of stress and trauma. <laughs> so uh, seeing them cause each other stress and trauma just warms my heart a little bit. I like the way you put it like that. Because for me, I was just like, hey, I, I come from Marvel. I love Magneto. I love <laughs> Rushdown characters. I want to see them just hit each, each other like two missiles going at it. They're so <laughs> explosive. These characters just get in your face. And we've seen how many rounds go down just from like, oh, Chip's going to die. It's their round to lose. And they get out of the corner and they land a wall clean combo and they bait one burst and do it again and they win, you know? Yeah. They, they go up against that against themselves. How aware <laughs> are you of this situation? Are you aware of these triple jumps? Are you aware the kick alpha blades come in from mm -hmm. the air to the disrespect your turn in the corner? There's so many different call outs on the speed. So to see the speed demons against each other, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, and with like all those options in the air, like the triple jump and the jump 2K, and just like the delays, he has a lot of cool stagger pressure too because of the recas and just in general the the way his kit is built. He's got the whiff uh, cancels as well, so it's interesting because you can make a lot of decisions in the neutral that vary from player to player. So I definitely like seeing not only the familiarity with the character right from the mirror match, but how quickly the player is able to recognize what the other player likes to abuse about Chip, right? True. Okay, so okay. it looks like we just desync on the spectator side. So yeah. it is going to be a 2 0 lead for Goga right now. And Goga's been playing really well here. I feel like Flame might be able to play with the river a little more, use these resources and maybe burst based situations. But Goga's just calling out the neutral, the anti air, chasing perfectly. It's going to be hard here for Flame. Yeah, most definitely. You see, already he's like, utilizing the PRC right there, I guess, should, should try to get a more favorable knockdown scenario, but unfortunate. Isn't able to get that punish and reversal. Using those jump HS is already with a four punch, though. Nice. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting. Goga is not really challenging a lot of like the, the wreck of pressure or whatever. He's just trying to stay solid and find these anti airs and these more grounded open ups. But right now, Flame's the one that finds it first. Yeah, I think Goku's just aware, like, if you're not going to delay Rekka and String, I can jump out or get out a lot of these situations. Just respecting neutral a lot more. Oh, yeah. And then the low is not respecting it. Man, Flame was trying to take his turn a little bit too early right there, and that's kind of the difference between Flame and Goga a lot of the time. Goga has been a little bit more disciplined, either challenging with like a DP like this, or just kind of waiting out the pressure sequences. Yeah, just making it like a little more one-dimensional, like I'll wait yeah. or call you out right away, and then exactly. I'm gonna put you in the same situation and try to count up my chip. Get ready to the RC to keep it safe. Oh, and that's the problem, yeah. If you're not gonna be ready with a punish on the way up, he'll be free to 6P or DP as soon as you land. I like the IB to the far slash, but was right out of the range. Attack him again. Oh, BRC, <laughs> not on range. Mr. Mr. Air throw off. Air throw is fine. I don't know if that was like, uh, like he tried to call out like a dash far as with a command throw, but it was pretty, pretty out of range. Ooh, nice overhead. Not much health here. Has to make a move. Oh, gets low. Okay. Can get started. Jumps out, but not enough damage here. The whip could have made him move. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, this man, Goga, back to back with the DPs. He's like, bro, I just need a little bit of health left to take that last heart that you got. Oh, but it's check. Dead. Yeah, not challenging with the DP, just challenging with the 2P right there. I really love that from Goga because we've seen Flame really try to break the opponent's pace with like a normal into command grab consistently, right? He's been doing that throughout the tournament so far. And my man Goga was like, nah, I play chip and I've seen you around the block before. I know how you get down and uh, immediately countered it. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, honestly, I feel like, you know, Goga just, you know, put a little bit of slack there. To be able to take these turns back and then it just really made flame guess a lot in these situations and really just came out on top indeed and we'll see how the bracket has progressed via that w from goga i believe he will be in the upper bracket finals awaiting the winner of retro mixup and acrol and as you guys can see down there heapski did take it over a double m three to one so we're gonna have flame versus red eyes as well as heapski gonna be going up against the loser of retro mixup and acrol oh this is gonna be good yeah, most definitely. And Heapski, Retro, Mixed Up, Acherol, I believe they all have played each other quite a bit. So whoever drops down to Heapski is going to be very familiar with his opponent. Heapski is going to be very familiar with them. But of course, it's all about staying in that upper bracket, right? Of course, you win this next match as Retro, Mixed Up, or Acherol, and you're going to be guaranteed a top three finish, right? And of course, it's a top it's four payout. So it's definitely a place you want to be if you are one of the players. Yeah, if you go to losers, you still have to win one more. So, you know, having that safe place and winners, you know, you, you can go have... You know, a quick iced tea, take take a seat down and watch the matches and, you know, breathe easy there. But, you know, warming up, like, some people go to losers and get stronger by playing more matches. So I, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, 100%, right? It's all about how you react to certain things as a player. Sometimes you want to have that security, that comfort that you're completely in the upper bracket, right? And then some people just need to be hit in the mouth right out the <laughs> gate and get it dropped into that lower bracket, and it just really awakens their next level of play. We've seen that plenty of times. Sonic, Fox, Punk, a lot of the greats in general 
have that gear that they can turn on when they get into the lower bracket. So we'll see if any of our players today kind of find themselves, uh, you know, in a bit of a different mood, a different type of level of play once they get dropped down into the lower bracket. Or if, you know, the comfortability of like a Goga and then whoever wins here kind of just is able to secure them a nice stable game plan, stable mental state throughout the tournament. True. Yeah, I believe uh, next up is going to be Retro Mixup and Acherol will be getting that very soon. And again, both of these players are very familiar to going quite far in the PlayStation tournaments. We saw Acherol's win rate, some nonsense, like 12-1 and or something like that. I believe he's taken an entire PlayStation tournament or at least been in grand finals of them before. So he's going to be the favorite, I think, going in. But Retro Mixup has done a lot of damage throughout the EU scene on that soul bad guy as well. So the matchup, I think, hmm, I'm not really too sure about this matchup. I've seen both sides uh, excel at it, right? I think I've seen Soul and Leo both win the matchup. So in my mind, at surface level, it seems pretty 5-5, but we'll see how it plays out, of course. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, in the last game, when uh, in Exert, when Soul had three-frame stand kick, it was hell for Leo. But, mm -hmm. you know, Leo with the buffs in this game, and, you know, considering how the game is now, you know, I, it might give slight advantage to Soul, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. even say, like, 6-4, you know? It's mm -hmm. still maybe... A 5.5 or something like that. A hard 5.5, five, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. It, it's definitely, uh, like, close enough to where it's up to the player skill all the time, right? Uh, it's Indeed. not really, yeah, it's not going to be too heavily decided by some type of advantage that one of the characters has over the other. So it's going to be all about the players, their decisions, and the way they utilize their tools and how they read each other's decisions, which is the beautiful part about fighting games, right? That's when we get to the real juice is when we're able to see these high-level decisions being made and the way these players are so deep into the game and so deep into the decision-making that they're able to counter, like, the these wild decisions that like how do you even counter the fact that th this person did this in the first place that's really the mind-blowing parts about fighting games that i think everybody gets drawn to and just so you could feel the electricity in the air when stuff like that happens indeed i mean we're in the early parts of strive and we're still playing guilty gear so there's so many Ooh. ways to come back oh retro mix-ups with the 75 percent poll all right the people have given their word in and they're saying we think Retro mix up with the soul is ready. Yeah, that's they are uh, ready. I, I think we're more heavily favored than I was expecting for sure. I mean, Acherol's record, I mean, his character is also very good, but there's a yeah. lot of faith in retro mix up and the bad guy, man. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. There's a, a good place to put your faith for sure. Hey, honestly, I think we're going to have a good clean fight. I mean, maybe not as clean as we'll watch both characters have a lot of dirt to throw around, but, uh, both these players have, like we said earlier, were hit the ground running during Strive and have definitely gotten a lot of results and done a lot of damage. So you know they're going to want to carry that. And they've definitely been some of the haymakers in Europe. So they're yeah, definitely going to be throwing around that weight here. Yeah, and if you're looking to up your game, experience some of uh, these uh, players yourselves, you can go to compete.playstation.com, get your True. chance to compete in these monthly finals for these PlayStation tournaments. They are open and free to enter, so you're able to compete with some of the best players in your region, whether you're EU or NA, but it looks like we are getting into it now. It's going to be our man. I forgot my man's name is James Shen, fan 69. <laughs> the Yo, he's read every guide on game facts of James Shen, so <laughs> trust and I he have did to, it all but... in 2021. Like, he didn't even play them back in the day. He was like, no, if I'm going to be retro mix up, yep. I'm going to go back in the archives. The scrolls will be thought. He has the same amount of hate for Sabertooth next member Street Fighter. But he's applying it to Guilty Gear Strive right now. I mean, uh, you know, Leo kind of looks like Sabertooth, so I can oh, understand him. Transferring the hate. Better call that birdie out. Gonna need that assist. Instead, he just calls the DP out, throws Ooh. the flash kick attempt to well done from retro mix up. Oh, the yeah. flash kick getting punished. Yeah, really good stuff from Agarol waiting on that burst because the jump S into the first big combo right there. <laughs> he waited until he connected with the falling S to get it off. Right? Yeah, really smart. I was like, what is your freeze hitting combo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, definitely was mad funky. I didn't know it actually like fully comboed like that. And our retro though again, dragging him all the way to the other corner just like that. Calmly walking up and throwing the right. flash kick again. The most rock and roll headbutt, too. <laughs> Welcome to the mosh pit. Ooh, Ooh, the vortex. And that was all reaction there. Really let the star kind of build up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
maybe could have been a position to block, but you know, he has a lot of recovery there. He he flexes out and, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That H fireball is definitely a heavy commitment because of the startup, right? He's able to act pretty quickly after it gets off, but not quick enough for the Night Raid Vortex. And that's just something you always got to be aware of when Sol is at that distance, right? It's a very common situation. After you get a successful burst on Sol as well, or if he gets a successful burst on you, they love doing Night Raid Vortex and stuff, whatever move you're going to do next. And yeah, just in general, after stage transitions, it's another very common situation to do it in. So yeah, Agarol just kind of testing retro mix up there and i mean he's not one to test man we've talked about he's a very experienced soul player he's going to be used to playing these type of top tier characters as well leo definitely plenty to be found in the wilds so he was ready and waiting for that h fireball yeah might have just been used to another matchup and just did it because you know yeah, another 100%. character might just jump but not mm -hmm. get caught up in it but soul can literally look at it and react wow the nice block on the forward heavy and the forward punch i love that move what a liger bomb Mm-hmm. Already starting the game up. Oh, switching back to the corner. And Retro just not expecting him to side switch that one last time. Gonna burst immediately. Ooh. Jumping in with that slash and the dash RC. In the combo right away. Damn, yeah, Akarol off to a tremendous start this time, and yet committing to the jump, he's gonna have to block the H Fireball that time. Max um gets Night Raid Vortex anyway, because again, you can't block in that back turn stand, so that's another uh, avenue that Richard Mixon is gonna look to utilize that, but it's all right, Akarol holds onto the round. They are going at it. What a <laughs> check on the Bandit Bringer. Okay. That was sick. The jump kick was stuck the Bandit Bringer right there, but the Volcanic Viper right in his face again. Give me some distance, please. Ooh, he's gonna super the banner bringer this time. Get out the earth. That's my space, but a gold first. Oh no, retro mix up. We talked about that. The comeback mechanic. Try to make his way in with the night raid vortex. PRC to keep him safe. Now banner revolver to get some distance back. Actually counter hit punishing the parry attempt, but not a big punish. Agro long distance on that sweep attempt. H fireballs will Ooh. try to act a little bit after blocking the first hit, but. Ah, it's a lot of hits to that one, and Akrol tying up the set with it. Yeah, Akrol was just on, you know, keeping that lead, getting the mix, I, calling all the shots. They're just That cross-up hit so clean there, you know, you, you could show how the conditionment came into play on that game, too. Oh, 100%, right? And I really love the way Akrol adjusted a lot of the time to whatever uh, Retro Mixup wanted to do, right? We saw a lot of the Night Raid Vortexes coming into game one, and he didn't really put himself at, like, a susceptible build, like, areas where he was susceptible to it in the second game. Really made sure that if he was ever at Night Raid Vortex range, either backdash, jumped away. This is something that was going to force Retro Mixup to PRC and make it safe, or just in general, adjust his game plan a bit. And yeah, it was great stuff. And as soon as Akrol got on offense, he really never let uh retro play again let's see how we go into this game three now wow they are they really want into that winner's finals yeah man it's that guaranteed top three finish you are guaranteed the in the money of course it's a top four payout so it's a nice spot to be in because you're guaranteed even more than just a minimal payout Oh, yeah, the far as reading the ground once again, but Retro committing to the hole, oh, committing to the throw, had no RC to OS with, and then Akarol was well aware with the burst bait afterwards. My goodness, just completely changed this around, and I think that was supposed to be a DP, but he got crossed up, so he got a night raid, and it worked out anyway. Oh, the whip, though, was ready. Didn't get a full combo, though, but the Fafner, calling out the back dash, no vortex. One flash kill. Yeah, the Fafnir hitting on the tip and the Flash oh. kicking on the tip. And again, he has not responded well to that fireball pressure. Well, we actually IMD that 2B. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, push it a little bit farther away than usual. My space. Yeah, but just comboing off the jabs directly into the 6H right there. That was a way to get a hard knockdown off your lights. Oh, caught a reach oh, in that time. No bait on the burst, though. Akron gonna be able to maintain the corner because of that retro mix of the force has a burst of his own. But we see Akron call it out pretty hard, but that guard break setup gets exposed by the three frames. Damn, and he tried to challenge the puzzle of him back here. Oh, the super, but no retro the camera. Too early. Oh no. Oh, Yo, my goodness, retro. Burst. Don't lose this, please. Okay. <laughs> the stand kick, no fear. James Shen will be proud right now. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. 
Ooh, the counter hit. Packs on the night rate for a little bit. End up hitting OTG, so not too much damage. Again! Oh, just the air dash, and I'm not sure what Retro will go with, but he doesn't keep the pressure tight and gets super for it. That cool thing, you must play my game right now. If you don't, if you don't <laughs> keep up with what I'm doing, it's done. Yeah, exactly. He's forcing this pace, imposing as well. Retro wiring and throwing the flash gear to him. Very smart, and then the charge does from long oh. distance. What's the burst? He's actually going to be able to dodge the burst, so he's not going to build much of it back, but it doesn't matter anyway. Gets air thrown, Akerol taking the lead in the set off a very chaotic round three. Right, the 2 1 there. It was almost coming back. It was literally a burst bait away there. You know, if Soul just did the back dash, <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was looking for, right? <laughs> on that charge, I was like, okay, so what's the burst bait going to be, right? He kind of went for a combo that just like, made him whiff it, but we have seen some of the players have that ability to dodge the burst in the air on that dust launch transition and then continue the combo in that state. So if he had that, I mean, we would have lost our minds because that probably would have killed him, baited the burst, and won the round and the game. But, you know, that, that is definitely a, a high-level piece of tech that not everybody is utilizing just yet. And right there, he still did a good job dodging the burst and all that, and they kind of giving himself a chance to win. But Akerol is just too clutch. Yeah, incredibly clutch there. And they are going down to the wire, honestly. Akerol has a good shot to throw that ambitious gameplay here. The the disrespect on, like, the multi-cross-ups. Can, can the three pay off again a lead, you know? Because that definitely took that last round. Yeah, Agarol is, uh, I think, my favorite disrespectful Leo. <laughs> like the, the so type many of now, it's hard makes. to say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then, you know, I, I think some of the players, uh, a lot of the Leos play disrespectful just because, like, the character is good at doing that, you know what I mean? But the way Agarol does it, I don't know, it just, it just tickles my fancy a little bit more. You can really smell your opponent's fear sometimes and take advantage of it. Good pickup. Nice tech. Yeah, oh my goodness, you see this, like he is just uh, so ambitious and so unafraid to lay it out on the line time and time again. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's paying off. We're not seeing a lot of damage off here, and now I was back in the game with a corner combo to super. Yeah, and he like it was uh, standing full screen and back turn stance and then saw the night rage in the bolt bursting. I don't know what that was about, but he's like, opening himself up in the corner because we had nice PRC into the quick 5k right there for the anti-air. Right? Playing hacky sack with the rejuggle. I like it. <laughs> so you gotta pass the boom bag back, bro. Yep. Off the shoulder, though. A little <laughs> injured. <laughs> Is that legal? That's gonna, we're gonna call that legal. Keep on going as long as the hands don't touch it. But Retro mix up trying to put the hands on Akrual, trying to bait the burst out. But he's just gonna hold oh, on to it for now. He doesn't kill him off. PRC, wow. just in case he burst immediately, but he doesn't. And he steals the round and the heart. And I mean, he had the super jump. Oh, up there, but there was no burst late or early. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, clutch tech throw. He gets the counter here from long. This is gonna side switch as well, put him back towards the corner. They're gonna stay in cancel low, but Retro Mix Up wants none of that. Just mag dashes banner bringers to get back in though. Cross? Okay. And the quarter positioning back into it. Again. Oh my oh. goodness. Get to the Liger Bomb here. Akerol gonna make him guess for game. Oh, yeah, this goes super. to Super. plus frames. Got yeah, the single low. You know, a lot of people like the back dash, the overhead, but oh no. Just my. that rush down to the throw. He threw the Nairade Vortex attempt. We talked about that at the very beginning of the set, right? We saw Akerol get exposed by the Nairade Vortex when he committed to that H Fireball, and it comes full circle as he's looking for that at that range to end it and throws him out of it. That is, uh, like, just a beautiful illustration of adjustment throughout the set. I mean, honestly, with three out of five, it's like you can only do so much early that your opponent will catch on to, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to see how the bracket has been shaping up via that W as well, because it looks like Akerol has made it to winner's finals again. You've seen his win rate in these PlayStation tournaments. Y'all pick 75% for Retro, which I don't blame you. Retro's a beast, but Akerol has proven time and time again on this stage he is one to be reckoned with, and he will be in winner's finals, guaranteeing himself a top three finish. And you can see how the lower bracket has played out a little bit as well. We got Red Eyes taking down Flame 3-1, and then Retro Mix-Up and Heapski still have to play as well. Hey, I like the Holy Order Knights will go on in the loser's bracket to see it go on. So that that's hype to me. I like the Soul Kai matchup. But uh, okay. 
Leo sitting on one of his thrones right now, trying to get that that biggest throne, you know. So I not surprised there. We we're talking about how Leo. You can't really downplay the character in this game, but yeah, he, why would you? He's just a really good character. Yeah, he's the second king, right, in the lore. I can't remember yeah. which king he is. He's the second king, right? So yeah, of course, guaranteeing himself at least a third place throne finish. But you know, he wants that lion share. He is Leo after all. He wants that big <laughs> foe hunted that he's going to be able to play for for first place. And if you're looking to get in on that money or any of this action, you can go to compete.playstation.com, sign up for all the tournaments. They're free to enter as well. So if you're looking to expand your horizon within the competitive video game sphere, it's a great place to do it, man. It's not only uh, fighting games, not only Guilty Gear and whatnot. We got Street Fighter, Tekken, all kinds of fighting games, as well as Call of Duty, Gundam, a bunch of other type of games as well, sports games, all types of things that you could be interested in. So I highly recommend it. checking out compete.playstation.com when you get the chance to uh, find out more about our realm of competitive video games, man, because it's a fascinating one for sure. Definitely. And if you're wanting to come to offline events, this is the way to practice. Get in these brackets. Yeah, hundred percent. You will be able to play against players like Heapski, like Goga, like Retro Mixup. All these players that we see time and time again, not only in the PlayStation tournaments, but the plethora of EU tournaments that are going on for Guilty Gear Strive right now. Again, we mentioned at the very top of the broadcast, a big ups to EU taking the ten v ten up against East Coast US last night. Right, the the big. Yeah. Uh, 10v10 that was hosted on Leffen's channel. Very close, came down to the end, but Leffen as well as Space were able to clutch it out with the chip in the May right over a lot of the East Coast guys. And I mean, it's beautiful to see that the netcode facilitates everybody being good sports about it, right? Everybody was like, right. yeah, you got us, man. Like, you got it. I don't know what to say. We're not blaming the lag or anything like that. It, it's really cool to see. No, it was awesome. I literally uh, watching all of it, you know, Hotashi, he might have got a little salty but you know his whole team had his back and was just like hey this is for fun dude it's cool you know yeah, yeah. and I, I thought that was cool it really was a team effort i'm not even trying to rag on the dude i'm talking about you know team physics they were all there i'm even a little salty and hurt you know i ate enough chopped cheeses in new york <laughs> growing up in my day but you know this is how you get better you know and these fun events this is what keeps us growing and when we can come off on you know we'll have a rivalry for our continents to go at it once more. Yes, most definitely. But for now, we keep it on the online sphere. Yep. And I want you all to keep it locked right here on Twitch.tv slash PlayStation because our winner's bracket is done. We'll be back with some more action. Please do not go anywhere for some more Guilty Gear Strive.
and welcome back to the PlayStation Tournament Monthly Finals for Guilty Gear Strive EU Edition. Of course, no free you around here. We are the <laughs> land of the free until the next 10v10. Right now, we got to hold that, of course, alongside my boy Nerd Josh. How you doing, fam? Hey, besides, I guess, being free, I'm doing pretty good right now, honestly. Uh, this competition is through the roof today. So many rushdown centric matchups. So I'm just having a ton of fun, honestly. And. I think the players are as well because a lot of them are pretty much in the money or close. So I know they're definitely going to try to get these matches off here. Yeah, we've already had so many good matches. We've seen the chip mirrors, uh, the the Leo and the Soul matchup, a lot of high octane, fast paced stuff, and that's the type of fighting games we like. Me and you specifically, right? One of the beautiful things about fighting games and things that draw me to them so much is the like forcing the person to make very quick decisions, right? And Guilty Gear is one of the games that I think is the best at that, right? It is very high paced, so many options to utilize at all the times, especially like when you play certain characters. That is just kind of always forcing your brain to act in a very high speed high decision making fashion and it's always uh, something that i enjoy so i'm glad that the latest iteration of guilty gear is uh along those lines no indeed like honestly the fast-paced gameplay coming at it all the time every character brings such a good variety and taste to the table that you it'll keep you playing defensively and offensively because there's so much to learn Mm -hmm. and uh, it's just like it's so easy to continue matches because of like how quick the rematch is and just the pace of the game in general it's definitely one of my favorites and let's see how our competitors have uh, been uh resulting so far right with their wins or losses i want to see what the bracket has been looking like because we do know that goga and agarol are in our winners finals and that's going to be the next match up but we can see also red eyes is down there defeating flame going to be moving on i believe with his chip i cannot remember what red eyes played but he yeah. and retro mix up is going to be on the other side as well Dang, so red eyes had to take down the giovanna and then play that chip mirror poor flame losing to two chips but i mean you live by the sword you die by the sword right that is the character he plays as well but i believe we're going to get into the upper bracket finals next which is going to be another chip going up against that leo yeah honestly uh these chips have all been explosive very strong so uh the leo here ha is gonna have to be aware of all these options that are coming out will they flash kick too much or not yeah, exactly. Right. That is definitely one of the questions to ask, especially when Acarol is at the helm of the uh, Leo. I mean, uh, we always talk about how aggressive these Leo players are and just how disrespectful they can be, because that's kind of how the character is supposed to be played. Right. He's got like a great uh, flash kick, got great tools in general to kind of disrespect the opponent. But Acarol, I think, is uh, one of those at the peak of doing that to his opponent. Right. He's just always willing to test them with the flash kicks, willing to test them with the berserker slashes as well. We've seen him just do raw three times times berserker slash over and over again like he really likes to condition his opponent to look for a lot of the stuff that you get tilted by against leo and then he'll adjust after he sees the way you kind of react to that not true uh that's one thing you got to know how preemptive this leo player is going to be because as fast as they can bring the mix-ups up if you try to take your turn back they might just be ready with that flash kick that forward punch that crouch dust that stand crouch slash there's so many different normals to be thrown out there and just air blocking the flash kick without a faultless defense can put yourself in a lot of these same situations so you're gonna have to be ready for this type of mix-up especially with a character like chip who when that risk card gets bumping you know he's gonna start jumping and he might just go out the ballpark unfortunately <laughs> Yeah, my man is definitely like uh, susceptible to getting home run all the way to the bay. You know what I mean? Yep. Like completely out of the stadium. And I mean, with Aleo being at the other side of that, he is a power hitter, right? We've seen the damage that this character can output, of course. So it is definitely going to be scary for the chip, of course. And we'll see how he kind of utilizes the uh, the pressure. I think he can overwhelm Leo's uh, in the air specifically if they're not ready, if with the flash kick or with the 6P or something like that, right? Uh, on the ground, I think he probably has a decent time as well thinking about it just because of the nine frame for a slash and he can kind of i think bully leo in ranges where leo likes to play but just doesn't have options as quick as chip i could be wrong about that though i wonder how their crouch dust will come into play mm -hmm. because leo's comes off the ground at a certain frame so maybe mm -hmm. if uh chip is fast enough if they hit the buttons at the same time chip should win but you know if leo does it just a little bit earlier it might just hop over and cash out big or even late, you know, who knows? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder. Like, I wonder if any Leos have uh, experimented with two D in response to command throw, like trying to react to command throw with a two D or oh. something like that. I don't know. Like, because of the airborne properties, I don't know how long it's active in the air to maybe dodge that. But who knows? Uh, maybe that will be one of the nuanced things we find out here in our winners finals because it is going to be that matchup. And yeah, we'll see. That's a when it comes down to this late in the tournament, this deep into the tournament, oh. right? The winners finals. Oh my goodness, it's right? usually pretty even, and the fans are thinking it's going to be pretty even too. We got to draw 50% in terms of the results on who everybody thinks is going to take this match. Yeah, if you don't know yet, folks, just flip a coin right now because it's that's as close as it's going to get here. And man, yeah. I like how you said who knows before that because, you know, even thinking past that on the crouch dust, you know, it might not even be considered airborne where we're thinking it, but it might still low profile. So, yeah, you know, that, <laughs> yeah, or right. with low normals, you know, like, yeah, it's definitely uh, that's one of the great things about kind of still being early on in the game's lifespan, right? Is that we're still finding out how certain things interact with each other, and that's just kind of how fighting games always are. That's kind of the meat of it is the fact that it, there's so many options in these games, like nailing down how every single option interacts with every other single option is like you know it's it's why we're able to play these games for 10 <laughs> 20 years and whatnot and things are still being found out interactions are still being discovered from games that were released in 2001 and before you know so it's it's really True. just a uh, amazing genre to be quite honest but it is going to be winners finals time upper bracket finals time leo Ackerall going up against goga chip Two of our best players, uh, two consistent PlayStation Tournament veterans as well. Akerol, I believe, has taken one himself. So he is looking to take another on his rightful throne. But the connection has oh, no. been lost. So we're no. going to wait just a little bit before we get there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Paying me yes, zoomed in on it too to let, to let me know. Oh, whatever. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, there's nice. some technical difficulties, but you know, the lobbies have been getting better and better slowly mm -hmm. and slowly. And we are, I guess, prepared for things like this. So. Here comes the match right now. And I'm glad you brought up the emphasis about how matchups go. Because in Guilty Gear, there's so many move properties. Some seems overwhelming at first, but will add up over time. So let's see how these move properties interact with each other during this set. And yes, wow. Akron is going to need to utilize those far buttons and Leo in like that counterpoint property that we just saw. He's got to beat the, the far end of the punch if he wants to fight on the ground. True. Because as long as Chip knows it's their turn in a lot of situations, they're going to bully for it a lot of the time. Oh, nice crouch slash. Very annoying normal to deal with. Oh, yeah, he's going to be able to get the wall break. The tension is going to be there. But Akron almost has 100 himself, and he just busts out with a record. And going into the super immediately right here, he's got tension afterwards just in case it doesn't kill. But of course it does. It is Chip after all. Good clutch out there, especially with how much that Crouch Slash doing work. That's one of the only normals I know about the whip, and you'll still get counter hit by the Crouch Heavy after. Yeah, but we got the fireballs of you. Just able to kind of uh, take up that space that she wants to be on the ground, forcing him into the air. Ooh, trying like, to beat out the burst right there. Not going to give it to him. Gogo was kind of ready. You know, like, that was nice. Yeah. Rod for the head, but he didn't get deep beat. Oh, and the Berserker Slash actually catching him out of the air. And I like how the Burks like popped up and got out that whole yeah. situation. Wow. You can see Akron again, never afraid to bust up a flash kick. Oh, the preemptive jump K, though, so good. And nice. then the jump 2K. Oh, he's still going with the flash kick, though. And then he's able to PRC, see the start of the DP, and block it and let the fireball do the heavy lifting. Well done for Akron. Yo, that was so nice. Turn it around in just two decisions in under six seconds, honestly. Like, it's a very intense round set there. And that's the validity of playing chip, right? That's just something that can happen very quickly. It's like, oh, I'm in complete control, and then it all comes crashing down in two decisions. That is definitely uh, the uh, con of playing the character, the weakness of him. Uh, despite how strong he is uh, when you have your game going. If you uh, run into one thing that's wrong, I mean, you could just explode. You eat that one combo, and then you have to guess for game. That's just how low his life is. And and you explained it off earlier in the set. You know, Leo had to get that one hit, and he was getting bullied by the Far S pretty much the whole game there, but was able to just clutch it out off post mix-up after regaining neutral one situation. Yes, indeed. It is definitely the, the danger of playing Chip, right? I mean, I've talked about it before. We've talked about it. How, like, when Chip is, like, 
getting his walks off, you're like, man, this character, right? How is he even a thing? He looks like a glitch, as Yipes put it. But <laughs> when you see, then you see him on defense, and you're like, oh, like what? This character is helpless, right? He's the poor chip. He just explodes the combo. That's just kind of how he is. I just don't say he's Akuma of the game. You know, he has yeah. every tool, but he has no health, so you really have to make it worth it. Oh, what exactly. a trade. But in the right hands, you might not get to play, you know, if they're matchup specialists or, you know, just very dirty with it, you know, they might get a read on your defense. But yeah. speak of it, what if you had the super yell your heart out? It, yeah, look at that. That was like one throw, one combo, and now he's got to guess. He doesn't guess correctly. Oh. He tries the DP, he only finds the big shield guard, no. Akerol. Right. Hey, I guess the whip of you like, hey, I want to play too. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good call out right there. Ooh. Setting back the dummy. And man, the stand slash. Counter hit first right back. Yeah, but I feel like in this, this set, they've been just using momentum burst a lot. My goodness, yeah. And Akerol just exposing him with a frame trap right there. Go good. Trying to take his turn back a little bit too early. Ooh. What a forward punch. Necro stuff using that upper body in vault. Oh, he tried oh, to backdash a little bit too early. Ended up getting clipped by the commando anyway. And wow, he really wants that wall break. Keep that tension bonus running. And at this point, we're going back to neutral because of that oh. wall break. And Akerol just utilizing the back turn punch as a stop sign right there. Able to go up 2-0 on Goga off that. Man, the hitbox on that stamp punch. Very nice. Didn't even let Chip really retain enough health to come back or get a burst or anything. But man, that set was so in your face. They were just using those emo bursts, as our homie C4 <laughs> would say. You know, damn, just going in. Yeah, right. As soon as there was any type of momentum for the other side, they were like, no, I don't want you to have this, right? So they just make sure that they burst and try to prevent themselves from ever getting in a defensive position. That is definitely a viable option in Guilty Gear, especially in certain matchups where you're just like, you can get so overwhelmed defensively that you don't even ever want to put yourself in that position in the first place. But then that is on the onus of the opponent, right? If you're too linear, too predictable with that style of burst, then you get your burst baited quickly, and then you might not even have the burst for the next round, and it's all bad. So yeah, it's it's why it's cool just to see like the interactions and the uh, the player decisions going back and forth. True that, but I mean we were talking about how this was gonna be a 50-50 matchup, and you yeah. know Acro going up two right away, showing you know if I'm right and my character does this much damage and can get one more read, you know I can end chip right at any moment I want. Exactly right. He's got to be like 12 and 1, 13 and 1 or something like that in the PlayStation tournaments. I mean, this fella is a beast. Yeah, if you seen before, you're going to be the open up now. I mean, if you're whiffing the actual projection, the forward punch like that, oh, you're definitely a beast. <laughs> yeah, Let exactly. chest talk. Man, never this is a day in the gym. The chest <laughs> press, the shoulder press, he's got it all. Oh my Ooh. goodness, even the defense. Back. Yeah, no. Pardon his back indeed. Not for the quick RC to catch him low, but not gonna have it. Akron still busting out with the flash kick. He's not afraid considering he had the burst available. Knew he wasn't gonna eat too much of a punish. Hydro Bomb has mad damage on Chip. Oh. We get him in the wall here. OTGs, and then again, again. calling him out with the active defense on the shield. Yo, Goga has tried DPs. He's tried waking up with buttons. Both options losing to it. I mean, we've seen Goga with no health, not afraid in these other matchups, but Akron's taking advantage of it with Perry on the back turn. Yeah, next time he sets up shop on the back turn, I'm gonna need Goku to wake up, bro. Just wake up, dash, <laughs> bro. Call it out. Send yeah, a message. Can... Yeah, you can get it. Just let him know. <laughs> right now, yeah, bro. Oh, oh, the beautiful dash of DP. He's got all the reads on Goku, bro. He definitely knows the defensive tendencies. Get out the R. This is mine. Still yep. gonna put the plus frames on him, but beating out the DP or burst there from Akron, actually. He just waited for Goku. Koga is still not afraid though. Wake it up with buttons. Wake it up with reversals. Run it up with the throw. Oh, man, the reversal back. Yeah, he jumps out of the first hit of the H fireball. Both players with burst available as well. Bonds. I he blocked it in the air though. Yeah, so he's not gonna be able to take his turn because of that. Ooh, quick wall break. Getting around the burst situation if applicable. Homie oh, with the super takes the quick damage quest. Calls it out. Yeah, go, go. Oh, he tried oh. to go the burst save combo right there too. He's willing to like as far heavy slash into nothing. Does find the hit after all. After all, did hold on to it. I would say throw, but 
you know, he does go airborne late too, so maybe he was a little unsure. Oh, like, oh, just yeah, that's a good point though. In a situation like that where you're scared of your opponent bursting on the first hit because of their life, you should definitely try to throw if you can. Oh, so heavy. The throw! The Commando City and then the Alpha Blade afterwards. Ooh, Ooh. came down directly to a flash kick. Now Axel with a set of shots here, trying to take nice this turn with himself. Oh, BRC, I thought he was going to be able to block the burst in time, but no go. Oh, Still swinging back on these strings. No fear. But now the combo from the air. Okay. Combo to Super? Is it enough? He's still no. yeah, a lot of proration on the combo there. He's still alive here. 50% tension for Akeral, though. He's got a PRC. Not even drift forward. Just waits for him. Oh, and again, oh. in the game with the parry. What a message to send. Waiting till that triple jump was up. Knew he would come down with something. And he ends it how he seemingly ended every game that winner's finals with the parry once more. Right? Where we're pumping up Leo's chest day this whole match. But it all came down the back day all in the yeah. last game, honestly. Just like, nah, I, I can bench these either way. Yeah, right? The fr the front or the back protected. Either way, good stuff from right. Akerol taking it 3-0. And let's see how the bracket is shaping up now with Akerol in a firm top two guaranteed position right there. You can see he's going to be in grand finals, winner's side. So whoever gets to him is going to have to take him down twice just to get to that lion's share of the prize pot. But you can see Retro Mixup actually narrowly defeated Heapski 3-2. The Ooh. soul winning by the skin of his teeth over his arrival, Kai, and we're going to see him go up against Red Eyes Chip here in our next match in that lower bracket semifinals. Yeah, so good possibility of, you know, the ninjas going ham into this top three. But, you know, retro mix up, no slouch to the game. We've seen them many, many times and have seen them in that top three. So there, there is a good chance for this soul bad guy to overcome. Yeah, Soul Chip, Leo, definitely three super prominent characters right now in the Guilty Gear Strive meta, of course. And yeah, if you're looking to be a part of these PS Open monthly tournaments, you can go to compete.playstation.com as well if you are trying to find out information, enter, try to get your hands on some of this money as well. There is a lot of tournaments to go around, not just Guilty Gear, but all kinds of stuff in the competitive sphere of video games over at compete.playstation.com. And right now, we're going to get to the lower bracket semifinals. Two of our prominent players, once again, it's going to be Retro Mix up versus uh but not not flame um red eyes there we go all the eyes, chips. Yeah. i was getting all my chips confused because <laughs> there's been a lot of them today a lot of presidents we'll see who actually reigns supreme because right now the second king is on that first place throne and you're gonna have to knock them off hey i like how you said you know a lot of people's top fives have these characters in the top four in here but mm -hmm. it's not all about the characters you know it's no. about the pilots too and these players playing these characters have shown that they are tournament ready, capable, and know the situations that they're coming up against time and time again. So this this should be exciting, honestly. Yeah, there has not really been much like uh, just given to any of the players, right? Today, all the hits that we've been seeing, all the open ups have been earned. They've been shown that a lot of uh, knowledge has been applied. Like, and there hasn't been really. Uh, a lot of exposure due to lack of matchup match knowledge. A lot of people have been well aware of what their opponents are going to be able to do and just like hard calling them out. Like we just saw, right, Akerol with so many parries coming out and they all <laughs> right. were like successful. It felt like 90% of his parries were successful that game. So when the opponent has a read on you like that, it, it, like you said, the character, it matters very little. You know, it's uh, however the player applies and how they find the reads on their opponent. And that's what we've been really seeing today. Of course, they've been utilizing their character's tools to get there, but it's been all on the backs of the player decisions. And that's what you want to see in fighting games. You want to see the player decisions highlighting uh, the, the W's and the results rather than some type of other nonsense. Yeah, because a lot of the times when you go deep into the competitive pool, a lot of us, you know, we start with who we like in the the low end, you know, mm -hmm. and then late end, if we if we totally want to win, we're like, okay, I yeah. can't do it with, you know, I was playing Faust, you know, I was like, I got to mix it up for a bit, I'll wait for a patch, you know, it's okay if you're going into the competition, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, honestly, honestly, even yeah. as cheap as I hate these characters sometimes, it's it's about the pilots. Punk is amazing. I can't feel like it's about soul. Yeah, Never. yeah. And right, and I mean, he's been playing Milia as well, right? So again, no, showing that he's even beyond just the soul. But that that is the thing is that a lot of the time, 
Uh, I think people get kind of lost in character strength and tears and whatnot. But honestly, like when it comes to tears and character strength, it only matters at a certain level. Like it matters at the top yeah. level. And it's even like a percentage in that top level. It's not even just like the, oh, you got to Celestial. Like, okay, the matchups matter. No, like it's not even just that. It's like even higher than that is where the tears and the matchups really matter. Until then, it's really all player on player action. And it looks like Retro Mixup is our favorite from the fans Ooh. going into this with a 70% advantage over that chip from red eyes and i mean if he gets past one chip he's got another one lying in wait so we'll see if he can survive the gauntlet it might be some good matchup experience here but who knows it might, it might be the monkey wrench too <laughs> yeah most definitely you can always uh never never happy to see a chip across from you in the bracket right it's definitely gonna be high stress and it, it, that's one of the things about being a chip player man i feel like you just gotta be prepared for the gray hairs i think that's why levin's a good <laughs> chip player he's just kind of always stressed out so it's like his natural habitat you know Hey, it's about player strengths and using those tools to your strengths, honestly. And these players have shown that. Yeah, Retro, ooh, ooh. doing a good job already. I mean, he's not having a lot of stress on his life, right? He's like, I'm playing so I do a lot of damage. I can take some hits. And ooh, I can ban it, bring it to start it <laughs> off. And I will impose my will and see how you play around. Nice turn nice. on ID straight away and stole off the Alpha Blade, wow. Ooh, a, that 5k yeah, actually going the wrong way. I'm pretty sure he wanted it to go the other way, but either way, gonna be able to counter hit confirm off that far S instead of Night Raid. Ooh, not quite dead, but put on a magic pixel. Yeah, great conversion with the fast RC off the clean hit DP. Huge thing. Little RC drag him towards the corner. It's gonna be a good start, but Red Eyes, he's gotta make so many correct decisions about slipping up one time. Yeah. Oh, just falling into the DP right there. SDP from Retro Mixup, obviously recovering very quickly. He would have blocked it in the air as well, which pushed him far back. Wouldn't have been an easy punish. So really smart weight and patience on the DP there. Yeah, honestly, uh, Chip's a hard character to air grab when they're throwing those preemptive normals out in your face. So, you know, why not throw the VV? And if they haven't shown, they're going to fall his defense thinking about it. Like it's going to be safe regardless. So really smart play. Yeah, very good stuff from a retro mix of it. I mean, approving the fans at home right early, right? Of course, this is a three out of five set. He was a 70% favorite and looking like it in that first game, to be quite honest with you, very dominant in both rounds. So we'll see how red eyes adjust. Of course, plenty of experience on his side. He was able to clutch out some uh, important victories over some really good players in the lower bracket. So I'm expecting an adjustment here in game two. Not true. And I think Chip has the tools to overcome. He could play immaculately with everything in this matchup, but Retro makes up just pristine on these hits and really catching out on two counter hit conversions. Oh, yeah, you can see keeping the frame traps nice and tight as well. Just going with a punch after the uh, four slash, or it might be full slash, but regardless. Still keeping it compact. Oh, and the challenge on the gamble blade. Oh, nice check with the crowd punches, though. We've seen that a couple times here. And of course, you just start giving lockdown, and as soon as Retro Mixup gets a chance to challenge, he does. Oh, and I knew he was smoked <laughs> on that one. Chip uh, definitely does not have enough health to eat that wild throw and live. Now that wild throw hurts. That man's buried beneath the snow right here. Body will never be found. Nice Ooh, jump nice. kick. Nice leap. Okay. Right into the Mr. Otter. Ooh, yeah, trying to test him with a dust. Oh, the trade not converted off of there. Yeah, and it looked like he pressed the button a little bit too early right there. He still blocks him. That's why he was just standing there after the DP. Mm. He was like, like where's my button? <laughs> oh, nice kick Alpha Blade to the RC. And even before that, he's taking breaks. Like, he'll run basically into the end and watch Soul for a preemptive break. But Soul was ready with the BB right off the bat. The retro, like his unleash is the burst, and he finally burst here as well. So uh -oh. I'm just a little bit longer with the far as so puts him in the grave. Yeah, that nine frame check, as you said it, you know, he can really dictate the mid game in this matchup. Really has to make Soul call out stuff. Yeah, hundred percent right. Soul wants to play a little bit more from like the six S range. Oh, as this frame trap on him, that's works too. <laughs> Into the faster. Oh. And this damage to Super is going to hurt. Red Eye's really going to have to not mess up at all. <laughs> My goodness, yeah, the Tyrant Rave. Oh, the headbutt. You oh. never want a headbutt in gear, fam. Retro mix up or 2-0 off that. I mean, it was still possible for Red Eye's, but 
was just not looking good, especially with how many of these VVs have been hitting and, you know, how uh, I would say Retro's been getting the hits off these far S's. We've already seen the IB on Alpha Blade done more than once, and that's yeah. really, really advanced. That's really smart. Yeah, it's definitely leaving him at a perfect range to start the soul game, right? Start the far S game. So even when he doesn't get punishes, he's still like in his face and making sure that his turn is over, right? And that's like super important up against Chip. If you can uh, make his turn over and uh, put him in the sequence that you want to put him in immediately off that, that yeah. is definitely a huge W. And that's what uh, Retro has been able to do with those instant blocks in the Alpha Blade. Maybe Red Eyes has a different option to mix up with in that situation, but whatever they're committing with right now is getting caught by that far S. Yeah, we'll see if he like tries to switch up a little bit with like some stagger pressure or um, even mixing up the timings on when he does out the way. But oh yeah, always ready if they don't punish on the man grab the <laughs> Just in case he tries to stick his hand in the blender, you know? No, I hear you. But I, I like the confidence from Retro. Just like, hey, if you're not gonna punish it, I'm gonna keep doing it. Throwing that Ode to SF2 Ken. Mm -hmm. Gasta, Gasta test the opponent. Right now, ooh, Red Eyes keeps the whip punch the bandit from here, but again, yeah, nothing solid there, so he's gonna expose it with a Volcanic Viper. The Alpha Blade through, man. This punch. Yeah, he was trying to 6B it, but going the completely wrong direction at that point. <laughs> Retro, yeah, you can RC to keep the pressure up, jump to K to start the pressure game. I like that, now putting his hands oh. in the blender that time, respecting the DP. But he doesn't Ooh. respect it when he runs it right back. Oh, he doesn't respect the DP on the wake up. Both players busting out with their invincible moves, and then jump to K rules the DP. Wow. I cannot believe it. Right, just from a pixel, hung on to it. It's so, so close. And but you can see how precise you actually have to be, even with the DP up against that jump to K. Like, it's so good. Red Eyes out of the corner, big play here, and gets the fast RC off the of 6k. The dash RC, even. ooh, okay. Oh, he doesn't get nice the whip punish in time. Yeah, that was so smart to just have the DP ready. What a is it? Okay, you are right. Up. Oh, wow, what a so close up, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, punching the goal for that burst out from Retro Mix Up. He's trying to hold on to this game here. You want to let Red Eyes build that momentum. They'll get that W on the board. RC to keep that Bonsai safe and the pressure afterwards. But DPs. Oh, it's oh, the no. Retro has the RC to force a final round as well. He is not out of this just yet and puts himself on set point. Yeah, like literally around the way here. But, you know, Red Eyes can bring it back. Will they bring it back? I have no idea. But they've been doing a lot here. We have seen the pixel come back. I want one more. Yeah, I'm hoping so as well. Oh, that here in the semis, bro. Oh, man, just got dumped. That's so much damage. He just ate. My goodness. I mean, Chip definitely has the tools to make this comeback. But all this is RC really waits for the burst. Very disciplined on that end. But man, he's eating so much damage up to this point. Jump H as well. Now utilizing it with the Bandit Brigger behind it as it whiffs. And Retro mix up, sealing that set 3 to 0. Yeah. Just came with a retro beatdown. Just brought it in with the straight up abare. If you don't know what that means, that means you just come in like a bear and just eat all their food. You just force all the offense and they got to play your game. Yeah, that was uh, it was really good stuff from Retro, right? Imposing his will time and time again. He was like, bro, like he has uh, that's the luxury that playing soul in that matchup really gives you is the fact that he has a little bit more health to him, right? So he can uh, take these risks and take these uh, scramble hits in a sure. way that Chip can't, as you just saw. Anytime Retro got a scramble hit, he made him bleed heavily. But let's see how the bracket is shaking up now with Retro going to be advancing into the lower bracket semifinals, going to be going up against Goga here to determine who gets that Acherol match of course retro mix up put into losers by Acherol. golga put into losers by Acherol. so either way it's gonna <laughs> be a run back you know one of the two want that opportunity at the king again not true but we do get that variety between the top three here so we'll be pretty yeah. exciting no matter what and uh going back to the matchup i mean we're gonna have a repeat so let's just keep elaborating on here it's gonna go towards the the pilot of course so yeah. it's gonna go necessarily towards i'm not saying one's better or not but player styles come into play all the time and yeah. everyone no not every same person plays identical so this should be interesting uh who do you all think will win next honestly get those votes in 
uh going back to that matchup one thing i think is really important is chip has more tools but mm -hmm. souls tools are weighted more so if he does get counter hits or he lands those stand kicks as a juggle it cashes out way more especially even if it's not a juggle he gets that forward slash and you're brought to the corner with one bandit ouch yeah, and Goga, to me, uh, if I recall correctly, seemed like a bit of a less scrambly chip than we saw from uh, Flame and uh, Red Eyes. A lot of the time, he had been willing to kind of block out certain sequences that they were trying to be anxious and kind of press their buttons on the way out of. He had been more of a, like, I'm going to commit to DP early, or I'm going to commit to, like, blocking most of the sequence before trying to escape via jump or something like that. So I think, yeah, as we just saw, Retro, very willing to play in that scramble, slugfest-style gameplay. So I think Goga will have a little bit more of an opportunity to slow it down, not really try to get into that retro game. Because if retro keeps pushing that pace and you fall into that trap, I mean, I feel like he's favored most of the time. Hey, I totally agree. The only thing I would say is Goga seems to switch the style on a switch when on the ropes. So I don't know if True. that's going to repeat again here this set. But the last two games we've seen goga getting these crouch punches and uppercuts with no health and not really being punished for it so uh but it's not like they're doing that a lot of the time so they kind of earned it you know yeah exactly right it's uh, he's had a very high successful like wake up dp ratio until he ran into acarol and then acarol like read every <laughs> single one right so we're gonna see if he's kind of discouraged by the fact that acarol was able to read a lot of his dps or if he's gonna fall back on like his typical decision making style right and of course it's all gonna be determined very early on about how retro responds to everything right it's always True. we're gonna see who what intel the players receive and how they implement that intel into their further game plan that is uh how the fighting games work of course and yeah i mean retro is definitely gonna have his hands full but i, I think as we just saw in the matchup he's more than capable of winning it a lot of the time when he does get those scramble hits he makes the most out of them right his conversions are are pretty good for the most part and he's able to i think have a good resource management i didn't see too many misuses of meter a lot of the time either so yeah i mean i think retro mix up will be looking good in this set but i, I want to see if goga can do what red eyes could not word i mean honestly uh I think uh, Retro has good awareness in the matchup going back to the instant block on the Alpha Blades. You know, it might actually be an option select now that I think about it, but I could be wrong. But uh, we've seen the close slash beating and we've seen the IB on the same situation. So maybe they know the timing and they're just yeah. hitting the buttons at the same time and going with, I get a close slash here if I'm, if I'm just off a little bit. And mm -hmm. if I get it on time, I get the IB. So that's paying off a lot in this situation. I want to see if Goga already knows where that is and knows where to back off or throw a different normal out there to kind of make them second guess and throw another layer out. Yeah, so I mean, we really didn't see in that last set retro play much defense at all, right? So it wasn't really like we got to see how he responds to certain things uh, in that one specifically. We did see, like you mentioned, the instant blocks and the alpha blades and whatnot. But before yeah. uh, or after that, I should say, it was a lot of just like volcanic vipers, right? It was like, yo, I'm going to make sure that you respect my DP. And if you can't bait this out again, I have a little bit more health to survive a lot of these uh, scrambles that we're finding ourselves in. And it looks like the pole is backing up that retro mix of <laughs> momentum, right? My man is riding high in those lower bracket W's. And I mean, the chat believes in them 75% and we're going to get into it again. This is going to be the lower bracket finals. Winner is a guaranteed top two finish and gets that run back versus Akron. Who put both of these players into the loser's bracket? Yeah, we're in the cream of the crop here. This is top three. It, it doesn't get any stronger than that in this point. But uh, no, yeah, I think Retro has a good shot here. But, you know, we've seen Goga do a lot of really cool layers to the matchups here. So I, I want to see the approach back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And we know we talked about that, the Goga already utilizing that far ass on the ground. And another thing that we didn't really talk about in the lead up to this is Retro's burst timings. Like this man never gives you the burst when you expect it. So I really <laughs> want some of these players, yeah, like he, this time I like that. But we just kind of committing to the combo, like especially on the first hit of a round, like just commit to your big combo because Retro wow. Mixup has really not been bursting on. I like that RC for the grab, but Goga just getting the turn right now. It's a nice air block. Getting the instant block, landing immediately and punish it. Yeah, that was a really good stuff from Goga right there. Fortunate on the instant block to make the punish a lot easier. And the volcanic fiber has to it's not easy to punish. I mean, I can imagine why the chat voted for Retro because 
that last set. Any counterfeit stand slash the vortex are out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. I mean, you just saw him win this matchup three to nil, so no, uh, no surprise if a hole went the way it did. But Goga showing that he might be a different breed of chip. Sure. I mean, he's that Mr. Otter combo, getting these close flashes a lot more in the neutral than Red Eyes. Ooh, an immediate challenge on that close S as well. He's got a free frame button of his own. He's not afraid to utilize it. Probably to get rid of the Nightway Vortex. That trade, I felt like it was gonna combo Man Goga by in the lip and trying to run it back. Oh, no, 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 up with the DP and it causes him the round. Man, yeah, I mean, you talked about it, right? He's unafraid to do the DP with no RC, with his life on the line, and even at the round start. Hey, I mean, a, a lot of other chips might succumb to, you know, backdashing or just holding holding back, you know, but not go oh, good. You can't peer pressure him into your orthodox <laughs> decision making. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> This man will not be conditioned. He's got his own brand. He's got to force that three out of five. Oh, yeah. Nice. nice. Actually. He would have taken his turn back after the windball ball cannon viper. Retro makes him one of the first again, right? That's why you see Goga just going with his full combo. That's what we talked about. Oh, challenges? My goodness, is still coming out to anybody's game. Does whip punish the bandit bringer beautifully oh. with that far S. Don't whip it in front of me. He's got one of the quickest, farthest ranging tools to punish that, and he showed it off on display. Yeah, honestly, clutched it out there. And I, to be honest, I thought Retro was going to hold on to the burst too. I, I think they lost their cool as a cucumber kind of value there and went towards the, the emo burst as C4 would have said, you know, really went towards the momentum and was like, hey, I, I need to get out the corner now. And it literally tumbled down on them. Yeah, I think he tried to like be a little bit less predictable with it because he did it like after the combo, right? That's a lot of the time what you see players will do now because players are so like good at baiting bursts early is that they'll like eat the first combo and then they'll burst like on like wake up, right? It won't even be like them waiting to get hit again or waiting to be put in a block string. They're like, okay, you did your first combo and then you'll most likely do whatever your pressure string is and they just burst on wake up. So I think right there he was kind of waiting for the combo to be over and then like trying to burst right after it was over. But uh, yeah, unfortunate for Retro, he didn't really get himself out of the position he wanted to get himself out of. Definitely unfortunate, because a lot of those situations, you know, a late burst gets you a gold burst. And yeah, then, and know, it was a gold burst. It was just blocked yeah. or he was out of range or whatever. One chip mix up or a double air dash from Milia, you know, that can be the burst bait to your game. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Ooh, and speaking of burst right here, Goga, I really like the timing on that burst. Actually, he waited until Soul passed him up, so he tried to lock him down in the corner with it, but Retro oh. not having it. Man, when he goes from a close slash to a far slash back to a close slash, that was <laughs> just by my lip. I was like, ah. Can't let you get close. <laughs> it's clobbering time. I'm trying to pull the trigger. <laughs> he was ready. Go he set those leaves on fire. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That was definitely some smoke the bear status right there. Only you could prevent forest fires, kid. Oh, no. Soul, because Soul is going to be looking to light it up, best believe. Yeah. Oh, boy. Soul's like, it's a boy. It's my boy. He'll break the glass as well. It's going to be all the attention he wants in the world right there. But he actually six P's. Very smart from Goga. You highlighted that earlier as a very good option up against a Soul's far as. Oh, no. Oh, gold burst, whiffs on that, then whiffs on the reach on the throw. Retro mix-up taking the advantage of both of those whiffs and putting another W on the board, or putting his first W on the board. And I like how the crouch slash hit, because that's the only underplayed thing about Soul you'll ever hear about, is crouch <laughs> slash, because that was his best normal in other games. And yeah. now that far slash is a little bit better, has the more frame advantage, you don't really hear about crouch slash as much. So I, I yeah. love when that move move clutches it out because it's, it's such a good move it's just a little outclassed now yeah for sure right it's definitely not the button that it once was 2d also good in this game but not the button that it once was and as you mentioned because of other prominent buttons as well the success the far s it's definitely uh, taking back seat to those normals but it's cool to see as you mentioned these old legacy buttons still do work because they do have their place in this game and still do have their uses yeah, it's just far slash does what it does better yeah. now. It, it, mm -hmm. That and more. That's about it. That's what I should say. Yeah. Oh my Ooh, god. What? Just DP as soon as they both landed from the 99 second scramble. Like that is a well, way to set the pace, but Retro, he's not going to get caught up in that. 
didn't get the full whiff punish from that range. Able to get out of the corner and throws the BRC. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised Retro just didn't hold up a backdash right there. Now off the wall, no MJ one more time. Big damage. Man, Goga running with it. Nice breath, man. Always checking the neutral with that man. <laughs> it's so good, man. <laughs> yeah, and then Beyblading him in the air as well. Woo. 6P as you landed. My goodness, that man got shoved to the wall. It was like an action movie <laughs> scene. Like he was uh, rigged with wires. He just pulled towards the wall. <laughs> I need to talk to you. <laughs> Ooh, you got information. And I really like that. You can see Retro now utilizing the gunplanes a little bit more in that far S range that Chip wants to be. Ooh, and then if you get too close, he'll bring out his own far S. Yeah, the two of them. There you are. That was a sick oh. tumble. I like what that. a conversion. Yeah, into the tumble to keep the corner pressure going as well. Oh, lands against the far S on the other side. My goodness. Go, go with the headbutt to just nice. completely decimate that round. Yeah, go, go. I mean, they are just back and forth here. I really don't know. <laughs> Full dragon punch to get punished. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't like that game. Double dragon, not a fan. Nah. I mean, in the end, they have to fight it out either way. So no teamwork here. No <laughs> real. Oh, he actually got with the second hit of that record. Interesting stuff. And then oh. he whips into a DP and he beats the first. Oh, my right. goodness. Alright, that was a tough round to swallow if your retro mix up. Like, if that round happened to me, my mental state, I'm gonna need five, bro. Like, I'm gonna need to go back to the character select to choose my character all over again, try to calm down because that was that was rough. Like, getting DP'd off of a whiffed far S and then getting your burst baited right after that, rough. No. And I think it's important you brought up the mental state because that game one, we Retro has been so cool as a cucumber, as I said early, earlier about the burst throws. I mean, the burst punishes. It is so hard to punish them, but this set, they've been doing the emo burst. They've been throwing these out, and this is the second time. And, and that whole round there was just, give me my turn. And then yeah. like, oh, you're coming in. I'm a, I'm a DP back. Like, it was literally... Two players just fighting over, I want to play. Not even like, all right, I'm going to wait this out because of this. <laughs> yeah, like, no. I'm taking my turn now. I don't care what's exactly. going on. I'm trying to take my turn now. Like, so, Chip is like that. It's like, if you don't have a read on what Chip's doing, you're just going to do whatever. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, that's what Goga is really presenting to Retro right now. He's like, bro, I'm going to suffocate you with this pressure. And if you can't figure a way to start breathing, then you're going to take this L. <laughs> True. Oh, this combo. I mean, on a lot of chip pressure, I like the super jump FD so they prove they get that delayed Rekka on me. It's hard. It's hard to get the idea of what a chip player will do. Oh my goodness. And again, you talked about it right this time. He was trying to get a little bit of an offensive burst right there. Keep the corner scenario. But Goku was ready nice. for it and then ready for that PRC as well. But the whip DP, but he messed up his punish. My goodness, this is scrambly and retro. I... He really does seem to be mentally crumbling a little bit. Yeah, the Rekka to the, the instant low to a fast RC high. That was fast, but there was no health on the table to play. And right now, oh my goodness, the 6P shutting down that ground range that Soul likes to play as well. Great stuff from Goga. So he's just trying to end this now. And he already has the read that, you know, Retro keeps running into more things and obstructing. So just keep it going. And that wasn't even a real combo right there. He actually got the, the second hit of the, the whip Rekka low. He ended up catching him. Oh my goodness. So yeah, doesn't quite punish that S-Fall can for a time. It's the blocking that H, but still not able to get out of the range. Oh, throws his DP. That was really good stuff. Oh, challenging again. Retro does manage to keep the corner with that time with the jump 2K. Quickly switching sides. Oh yeah, he doesn't want to oh, get the, the first. Oh, oh that's not gonna work. He's gonna go to oh. RC tries to does after DRC go let him see it. Keeps the burst with the core five oh keeps the corner with the burst and punishes the SDP attempt once again. Golga <laughs> taking it 3-1 and a wild way to end losers finals. <sighs> wow, Rich. That I couldn't even keep on it. <laughs> there was one point where I thought I was gonna come in, but I was like, <laughs> no. No, it's not even going where I think it is at this point. Like it, I, it was literally five back and forth. Like literally coming down to that last check to the Rekka and man Goga clutching.
Yeah, that was, oh my goodness, bro. Like, they, they, both players just scrambling at the end there. And I mean, we talked about it, right? Usually, uh, Retro Mixup is pretty good in those types of game styles, right? Where both players are kind of swinging with a slugfest, making high decisions or making high paced decisions very quickly. But I mean, it, today, Goga was the one that was superior as we take a look at the bracket and see exactly sure. how he got to this point, right? Goga fell in a winner's finals to Acker all three to nothing and then bounced back quickly up against retro mix-up three to one playing retro mix-up style of game and really just playing it a bit better with that chip i mean chip is better at that style than soul and i mean he just utilized it to the point where he wasn't running into those big damage hits that soul can just cash out on so it was really good stuff from goga and he's gonna need to replicate that style up against Akaral if he has any chance at bringing this back hey i agree completely like uh just from them fighting the set before you know he was backing off, he was taking the time and really punishing Chip. When Chip really put it onto him with Goga, really tried to make that one moment but never got it and the damage just kept adding up and up and up. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and Goga really, I think, showed a display of dominance up against everybody but Akaral today, right? I mean, that True. was a really good stuff up against Retro Mixup, who is no slouch. Retro Mixup getting no. that third place as well. Good stuff to him. He'll be in the money as well as our fourth place particip participant, Red Eyes, as well. So big ups to both of them. But of course, that first and second place is going to be battled out between Akaral and Goga. This is going to be our repeat of our winners' finals as well. I mean, Akaral, it, it was wild to see because Goga was really dominating against everybody else, but Akaral had every right read on him right like he all his parries <laughs> yeah. were successful he was coming out with the anti-air five p's like the back turn p's just putting them up at stop signs anytime that chip was trying to get into that range to play on the ground game like he had a lot of answers that i mean goga hasn't had too much time to adjust right he had to play his losers final set and now he's got to be thinking about what he needs to do up against leo to make sure that whatever happened in winners finals does not repeat itself true i mean we we've already seen that Akral is that kind of player that will do it but they will tighten up at times too. But, uh, you know, they definitely lost that lead the last time because of the multi cross ups on the disrespect to take that final round. So mm. I'm wondering if situations like that are going to come up where, you know, if, if they're going to use Leo's advantage and respect and really try to milk a win to take that mental game or just try to inch it off, you know, who knows? Yeah, we're definitely going to see, right? Uh, Akaral is definitely more than capable of playing both styles. I feel like Goga is as well. That's what's kind of yeah. cool about both of these players is that they've been able to go from 0 to 60 in an instant, right? They've been willing to kind of block it out and see what the opponent's doing, but then just let the DPs fly like nobody's business, right? We saw it's Goga, true. like, he just had 99 seconds, jump forward, and his opponent jumped back, and as they both landed, DP. Right. He's like, bro, like that's the type of game I'm willing to play as well. But he also has been one of the more disciplined chips on defense where he's not always just DPing. He is waiting for his opportunities, picking his spots in a little bit more of a nuanced way. And Akerol is the same way. He is willing to show you that he's really uh, ready to flash kick pretty much at any moment for a challenge. But a lot of the time he'll kind of manipulate you into doing something more committal and then at throwing you instead. So we're going to see the way it's broken down. Both of these players have incredible win rates, 14 and one and eight and two. Ooh. So 80% win rate for Goga, 93% win rate in these PlayStation Damn. tournaments for Akaral. I'm telling you, this man is a problem, especially in this environment. And he likes that throne, right? He's playing a king and he's looking to take that crown once more. Not true that both these players, like you said, very ambitious with the rushdown. And even though they're ambitious with these uppercuts, a lot of these positionings that they're throwing it are going away unpunished or being air blocked in a situation where they're ready for the scramble after. So I can't really get too mad at it. You know, honestly, oh, yeah. they're putting in positions where they're getting uh, advantage posts. So, you know, I'm wondering late game will they switch the meta up and add a layer for being more aware with the air FD, which will allow more air throw call outs. But, you know, there's the RPS game in effect for a grand finals that come into fruition, you know? Yeah, it's definitely something I'm interested in seeing as well, especially if we get a reset, right? Then that'll be a whole first set of intel that both players will have on each other. And that's always a, an interesting set to see how players respond after the reset in Grand Finals happens. But of course, we have to get there first, right? And Goga proved that he was not able to take even a single game off Akaral in that winner's bracket. But the chat has more faith oh. than that. It's actually a draw, another 50% result. And wasn't it 50% result in our winner's finals too? between these two players so it's definitely 
split between Akerol and Goga. And there's a lot of faith having those three games of Intel, right? Goga did get to play a whole set against him. And we've seen plenty of fighting game tournaments where that loser's uh, finals or that winner's final set, the loser bounces back in a tremendous fashion in that grand final. So Goga's going to get his chance to do so here. Akerol going to get his chance to put yet another crown on on the PlayStation tournaments. Thank you for joining us because this is grand finals right now. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Get the tweets out. Let everyone know. Tweet your grandma. I tweeted my grandma. She was actually like, she was like, you're on the PlayStation. She doesn't know what Twitch is, but I love you, Meme. <laughs> she definitely knows what a PlayStation is, though. I'll tell you what. Go to a PlayStation. And mm -hmm. Shout out to Meme. That is an institution right here. And we're going to see <laughs> who, of course, gets to be crowned at the PlayStation tournament champion of this month here. Akerol looking to take another championship under his belt. And himself another one. The uh, collector type gimmick in army shouts to him. Ooh, fireball out of range. I like Where are you going? Ooh, the four point. The Ash projection like already. I'm reading the read in this matchup like, I'm looking at you and you're running. Yeah, right. So, look, I know you're gonna be wanting to uh, try to escape, get this like chip pressure going to the ranges where you want to be. And Akron already showing that you better be tight with that pressure because the flash kicks will expose it. Yeah, the strong ground game is making shift commit to the jump heavy, and only one has gotten in. Ooh, what a whip on the flash! That was crowd like whip flip to Goga with the torch does on the flash kick. Like that is high level. That was a lot of confidence in that read. Yeah, because of the emo burst, was able to cash out and oh, wow, almost got the air throw. Nice double jump into triple. Yeah, I was gonna say that he triple jumped forward to make sure that jump 2K was in range. Right? Oh, he back dashed the command grab at the perfect time, and then we're right back what? for the parry game. Oh my God, Akerol sending messages after messages, bro. His DMs are flooded. He's letting them know about himself. <laughs> Why well, he's so nice? God damn. Oh my goodness. Now a Liger bomb. He is back in this, bro. Oh. That's one way to send a message saying, hey, I got your number. Don't worry. You know where to find me. Bro, right here to miss. Yeah, bro. Like, I mean, he just has every right read. And again, the DP. This man's a. I don't know if he's into astrology or whatever, but Akerol is telling him his horoscope. Like, bro, like this is the type of day you're going to have. This is the, the pros and cons of your life right now, your love language. He knows all about what Goga wants to do. Hey, you know they know about astrology. They're a Leo player. They got their Leo tweets ready. They're using the, You see how many of those forward punches just hit? That is an, that is praying to whatever house on whatever star <laughs> actually i don't follow enough but i guess i got my palm red once but you know it's looking shiny out there for anyone on the fifth moon of the yeah, I was crescent say, moon all his sons all his moons are in the leo side of things yeah. right now right like i don't care what your actual sign is this is leo season of first and foremost and i mean True. this has been Akerol again right looking as dominant as he was in that winner's finals going up 1-0 here early uh, yeah, Akron just can't wait to be king, but you know, that song must be over here. Let's go and keep it going. Gameplay. Ooh, and yeah, of course, he's trying to challenge the plus frames of the gameplay with a flash kick, right? Akron is super good oh, flashing, especially when he has first available, and Goga, you can see, uh, in a similar vein. Yeah, I definitely feel like they are scrapping for the turns, especially for this mid screen, because the corner is yeah, so scary good. right now. Sending him up one more time and a good block from Goga. He will get successfully for the game there, staying alive for now. Oh, Ooh, no. ready for it. What? Just made the erupt on the run up. I like it. Just slammed <laughs> in the ground. Right, it wasn't what I would use, but you know, <laughs> works just as fun. I, I can't remember which Fast and Furious movie it is where Ben Diesel just uh, stomps the ground and the parking structure comes apart, but that, that was that <laughs> moment right there. <laughs> RC pressure. Yeah, the jump back kick. Trying to shut down the approach from Akerol. Doing a good job of it so far. Finally, Goga getting some uh, offense of his own. But the RC into a slick air back throw. Oh no, the screen is cut off. He's forced to deal with this Leo pressure. Once again, he's got the burst available. Always oh, trying to carry it. Oh, okay. Nice combo. The other side of the corner there. Oh, very nice. Dash up 6P this time. Just shutting down whatever Goga wanted to do. Oh, 
Was ready with the jump dust. Okay. Getting the clones and the jump kick and the cross up. Okay. Yeah, he's doing a good job overwhelming Akral right there. You can see why Akral just went out with a flash kick. Right? Tired of getting jumped in on, but completely whiffed anyway. Yeah, good pressure. You're getting so many corner S's. It's just all adding up one and over. Nice. Yeah, the bonsai reset right there. Knew that he had Akral frustrated and he was going to be looking to scramble out. So great reset and a great bounce back from that game one because we were just talking about how effective Akral looked. I mean, with the way that first game played out, I thought he was going to run away with this grand finals the exact same way he ran away with winner's finals. And Golga proving me wrong immediately, right? Nice bounce back taking two rounds straight. Yeah, the adaptation there, you know, and was able to shake it up enough. I, I don't feel like they're DPing every time or et cetera, but they're definitely trying to do it in, in very random spots that call their opponent off guard and take those turns back. So it's interesting right now. A lot of that was getting punished, you know, but, you know, Gogo was only getting far S's to Rekka and then keeping the scramble going. So I wonder if he's going to be able to convert with like a dash up forward heavy as he gets more confident on these cross up flash kicks like who knows yeah we'll see right we saw a very confident punish come out from uh, one of the flash kicks with the uh, charge dust and True. we'll see if he gets some more of those hard reads going as the set goes along and he gets more intel on his opponent i do think Akral is going to chill out a little bit like present maybe a little, a little bit deeper of a layer now when it comes to his decision making because he was really testing goga here in these first two games where it's like bro i'm gonna dp most of the time and I'm going to challenge in ways that you expect me to challenge. And if you're not going to be able to stop it, then I'm going to run away with the set. So now I think that he's shown that he can stop the, the base level Leo plan. We'll see if yeah. it gets a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think it's important how you said, as long as they can run with it, they'll run away with the set. You know, like if the reversals are punished, it's, that's a huge gameplay breaker. But they're not getting punished here and getting the hit after. Oh, nice cross. Yeah, that was off of the guard point stance, too. So we haven't really seen that much from Akral, if I recall correctly. So maybe trying to utilize that a little bit more. Ooh, the jab going to interrupt. Oh, no, he tried for the charge. Does punish again, but a little bit too late. Akral was ready with the jab afterwards. But counter hit for any slashes. But it's out the flash kick again. My goodness. Ooh. Man, jumped right into it. Not done yet. But going to have to eat all this pressure with positive tension rate. Oh. Wow. That was, I it worked think... Out the longest we've seen Akral not do anything the whole set like off that stage transition he didn't have any meter he respected Goga's meter and just kind of waited for something not used to what you're seeing nice that fireball so good oh yeah yeah exactly trying to hold up back after the game of rage plus frame still got exposed Slamming him to the corner. Got through the overhead. He's trading. Okay, no fear. Slugging it out right there. Gogo finally coming up with it. Shrubin to keep the pressure on. Oh my goodness, the jump 2k actually catching the Berserker Slash out of the corner. Oh, that Berserker Slash catching him out of the sky this time, though. Ooh, the super. Not going to be able to whip punish, but we'll make him block. Damn, the jump D. Trying for a DP after. Whoa, flash kick coming up. Catching him from the top rope, both of these players be swinging, man, the 6S. Oh, he swag again, and yeah, that uh -oh. one hit of damage will be enough to make sure he dies. First, not available because he didn't have the life to live past the one normal. Man, that's sad, just going at it. But th this is what can happen, you know? Honestly, especially with all these unchecked reversals, you know, the, the unfamiliar is at an all-time high right now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and it's not even like with the characters, right? It's the players. Like, they're just like, so they don't have a read on when each other's going to do a reversal anymore. We saw in that first winner's finals, like, Gogo -Go was just read by Akral every time when it came to the wake up DPs. And now nobody's reading anything. They've uh, turned in their library cards. They're like, this is not for me anymore. I'm an anime watcher. I'm not a manga reader. Like, I don't <laughs> read my cartoons, bro. Okay. And this is what it's looking like right now. Both players are kind of just like trying to impose their will above all else. We'll see how that will oppose this long term. But <laughs> yeah. you're always going to hit constant. So, like, you know, as the players see what each player wants to do on the block string, how they want to back off, etc., you know, they're going to get that read and start going in. So, as the set develops, we'll see uh, how these reads develop. A silent victory is worth more than any pretty speech. Aleo said that? <laughs> I feel like that man likes to hear himself talk, but maybe that's just me projecting. <laughs> I mean, he's spitting, though. He's doing, he's doing, he's spitting. 
And yeah, we already seen a burst come out from Dogo here, right? He's not trying to give Akron all this momentum, but I mean, he's already lost half his life. Akron, oh my goodness. A couple of Berserker slaps to put it back in the corner. The parry to call out the wake-up buttons. The back turn buttons to call out your wake-up buttons again and just go in a right through with a perfect. Damn, just breaking the glass. Opa. <laughs> Dang, even watching him sit on the throne, put the swords away. Oh, wait, Ooh. wait, wait. No, it was just a route. I think we should still be into the match. There we yeah. go. We're just looking to too go. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> the, match. the hair care routine will be dropped on Twitter. Don't worry. It won't be dropped here on the stream. Can't, can't take more than the match. OP, bro. <laughs> Back to the match. A counter. Oh, the DP actually catching the other side of the Berserker Slash right there. PR seeing the fireballs. He sees Chip approach. Not even wanting to stick his hand in that blender. Ooh, nice on the overhead. The flash kick. All that health adding up. Acro wants to make this 2 2 right away. And the yeah. out of here. He's on the verge of it, trying to test him with those back turn far slashes as well. <laughs> it looks like he's trying to send a message to the parry again. I think that's what he wants, but he's not going to be able to get it so easily. Yeah, yeah, back turn. Oh my god, that's super good too, though. The, honestly, the back turn punch, I think it's like seven frames, but the hitbox on that joint be not uh, two to two just like that. Yeah, after all, a game away. You know, if Leo takes this next game, he can ask us what conditioner we use for that main, <laughs> you know, trying to end it quick because obviously needs to get them tangles out. Man, been fighting all day. Yeah, the, the curly hair is definitely a, a struggle, as we both know, when it comes to the tangles. So my man Leo <laughs> actually is, yeah, yeah, looking for any and all advice. And right now, he doesn't need any advice in the game, right? He did a, a nice job bouncing back once again, trying to seal this first set. Because as you uh, talked about, alluded to, Goga does have to beat, defeat him this whole first set to actually get a zero-zero result and get a real chance at that alliance share of the prize pot. Because right now, Akerol still in the driver's seat, has a whole set to lose. But right now, you know, he doesn't want to get to that. Point. He'd rather seal it out with this last game, take that first place, and chill out for the rest of his day. No, nah, indeed. Like, just wants to be in and out. But how on and off this set has been, you know, has just gained some footing. So maybe the monkey wrench coming back in the end, and who knows? Because some of these rounds has been so hard for either to get footing in. So I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, been kind of a real volatile experience when it comes to who establishes their like game plan. Um, it really has just been like whoever has been able to scramble their way to the first hit. Um, but we'll see who scrambles their way to the first hit right now. After all, oh my goodness, Goga's clicking up with a DP as soon as he gets the opportunity to. In the corner, he gets called out. He's there that jump heavy flash. And now that flash for the fireball. You need to see that Goga's consistently going to jump A. Kind of shut down that air game, but Akerol has been content with playing on the ground with Leo. Jumping out, not sticking his hand in the blender that time. Knew that he would be ready with a uh, 6P or a BP once he landed. Yeah, using that air movement, to, that's the classic, you know, to call out a strong mid game. You know, you go to the air and you call it out right away, especially if that's recovery. Ooh, oh that back turn punch. You see the hitbox, we talked about it. Oh. He's trying to fish for it, but it's dead finds the back turn slash, and now he has tournament point. I can't believe it was outclassing Crouch Slash like that. And I felt like they would have went back and forth. Wow, what an air block. Nice, nice cross up. Oh, air block. That's a bad damage already. And he's a back turn. Tries to sneak one in again, but Goga waking up with the buttons. Catching a reach, but only get an overhead. We need to come on off that jump in and challenging once he's blocking. RC gets the Apple Blade cross up here, respecting the old flash kick attempt, not respecting the DP though. Goga just oh. running him down. Ooh, and then and the jumping to avoid the flash kick that time. Good opportunity here in playing that mid range game, but runs into the four punch. And the wait. Oh, chilling now. What is happening? Man, just, just preemptivating button. What is. Yeah. You're just waiting for Goga to do something at this point? It's looking like it. Oh. Oh, maybe a deep no. Oh no. Was it? Oh, I, no. Wonder, I wonder if it was really like a spectator DC at the oh, end. No. He's so sad. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. It's unfortunate. I, but I, I, we'll, I, I, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out what happened here as soon as we possibly can. <laughs> I mean, that looked like a real end there, though. <laughs> no, it looked like a real end. Maybe he's just <laughs> nervous right now. 
don't know. And, and just playing with his hand off the stick, you know. Just kind of baiting the neutral a little more. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I think it was a for the yeah. He's like, oh, it looks like we're going to the different spectator one that's still in properly. Okay. It looks like we are in the final round here. Goku was able to take nice. it. DRC with a slowdown, trying to apply this pressure to the corner here. Yeah, he still has the pressure to jump 2K. Oh, the oh, three actually oh, counter hitting it. Yeah, for the full combo. Nice juggle into the super. He's going to get the wall break. Now you're going to have the guess for game fam. Plus frames for the chip. What you going to do with it? Oh, he's nice flash kick. kick. Yo. He has the wall in the first, the and he goes directly into two cool. He gets the first to lock him out of it. Everyone takes the tournament three to two. Oh my god. I'm so glad we got to see the end. Because I know these right. two players have been playing so well. So I wanted to see how it was going to play out. Oh. Flash kick the cross of Alpha Blade. Goes into Super as soon as he gets the burst to lock him out of it. The chef's oh, I was kiss. so nervous, Range. I was like, I knew it could go either way, but I was just banking on my gut, being like, oh, we'll have another set. But we got the, the, sec the secondary spectating in time. We got to see the end in Acro holding it down for a king, for the Leos out there, you know, repping that inner lion inside. And man, the king of the jungle today, Acro, over all these players, amazing. Yeah, the second king takes first place. Big ups to the production crew as well. Switch it over to the caster or the, the spectator that did that not clutch. get desynced. Yeah, because that, that was, was like incredibly a, clutch. A hell of an ending, and I'm glad we all got the saw because that was uh, super sick. Um, yeah, but uh, that was the way it played out once again, right? Acherol, he's so good in these PlayStation tournament environments. Has only lost one match throughout his whole PlayStation tournament career, continuing to add up that win rate. So we're going to see how he got to that first place with the way the bracket entirely played out today here for the EU side of things. Of course, he was able to take that first place over Goga in Grand Finals, but it all started with that very close setup against the Sori's uh, Giovanna, right? Just squeaked by 3-2, then defeated Retro Mixup 3-1, 3, -1, 3 over Goga and then Goga made it such a very close set in grand finals really showing his acumen on the adjustment side of things and making sure that Akaral didn't get to just run him over like he did in the previous set making great adjustments forcing him to earn that victory and he earned it in spectacular fashion hey you said it. he definitely earned it like considering all the monkey wrenches and everyone's plans that were thrown in today and all the different styles going on I think everyone should give themselves a round of applause here because you know with all the new players getting that growth in showing all that you know just watch your matches and come back because y'all put some superior gameplay on the map here to learn from yeah i mean eu has been proven that time and time again that they are forced to be reckoned with in guilty gear strive right obviously all the tournaments that we've been a part of for the playstation tournaments have been phenomenal they've been showing us really high level gameplay and different takes on the characters that we have in the na region and of course they did win the na east coast versus eu 10 v 10 last night so they are most definitely yeah we got we got to hold the l's but the eu is uh making sure that everybody respects their region in guilty gear strive and beyond right one of the finest sure. fighting game communities out there so yeah big ups to them man and if you're looking to get involved in these PlayStation tournaments, whether you're in the EU or NA, you can go to compete.playstation.com. And that's where you'll be able to sign up for the Guilty Gear Strive tournaments that you just saw today. Get a chance to play up against these players like Akron, like Heapski. I know it looks intimidating, right? You're like, man, I don't want to play against this guy Goga and Akron and all that. But that's how you get better. You know what I'm saying? And these players will definitely True. show you and expose how you can be better at the game so definitely good stuff to everybody that competed today it's been a real fun tournament so far josh you got anything to say before we get out of here my man i just want to give the players props honestly like uh we had a lot of new blood and even uh retro you know they just started playing they just started getting these guilty gear top threes in this game and a lot of these players you know yeah. this their first game so jump in there get in the water you'll never realize how far you'll dive deep if you start doing this regularly so join these playstation tournaments and have fun that's so true because I, I don't know i can't speak for you but i definitely did not see myself getting as deep into fighting games as i am now when i first started yeah. them but uh, I am more than glad that I am here where I am now. So thanks to all of our players, as you said. Thanks to the production crew. Thanks to the fighting game community in general. Remember, visit compete.playstation.com for any and all information regarding these tournaments. And we'll be back very soon with the NA bracket for Guilty Gear Strive. Peace out. Later, y'all. Much love.